Welcome back, friends, to another episode of the Zephcast, the show where we get to know your favorite content creators, streamers, and podcasters alike. I am your host, Zephyrs XP, and with me today, we got a double feature with fellow Twitch streamers and content creators, Fortune Cookie and Kyle Hi. from A1 Twins. Thank you both, seriously, so much oh. for being here tonight. How are you both doing today? We are doing great. How are you? Doing well. I'm ready for a wild ride of a, of a <laughs> podcast. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I should have put on the chopper hat since you had the doe flamingo. Whoops. <laughs> Hello. This is going to be a wild podcast already. I can tell this is the first time I've ever had like two different Twitch streamer channels like all together on this. So yeah, um, since I've already had both of you on the podcast before, I'm not going to go much into like Twitch streaming journey because we already talked about that on Fortune's podcast and on the A1 Twins podcast. So definitely be sure to check both of those out if you haven't done so already, everybody. But I thought for this, we could kind of talk a little bit more on streaming side of things, some fun game mm -hmm. kind of conversations and just kind of see where our conversations take us. But usually we start off with an icebreaker question. So you guys ready oh for boy. the icebreaker this time? I this am. This make me look sophisticated. <laughs> I am ready for this icebreaker question, especially since this is the bestie cast. Ooh. Yay! Yes, it's going to be an awesome conversation. So the one I got this time, which I'm really interested to hear both of your answers. Oh, the, boy. The zombie apocalypse is coming. What are your two weapons of choice you'd bring to protect yourselves? Oh. <laughs> so, I would oh. bring a banana. Guarantee well, you would bring a banana. Potassium. Okay, so, the, okay, um, spoilers-ish for the next round of uh, the, the game show my brother and I put on, but Light oh, came no. up with that question while we were golfing today. Yeah. She's like, oh, a great question. What weapon would you take in a zombie Well, now apocalypse? you're going to take that question off. Oh, no, it's, we're still going to, we're going to let it rock. Um, we'll just have to invite or use it on somebody who's not in this podcast. Ooh. No, it's all good. They won't. They won't expect it. We'll keep it going. This will probably uh, come what's out your in weapon? Like three or four weeks anyway. So you're good. You're right. good. Probably. What uh? What two weapons would I take? Um. Well, obviously a gun. Uh, <laughs> so, something. Some big. I don't know. I'm a terrible shot, so I'm always like shotgun, or even just a pistol <laughs> and one. improve my aim. And uh, I don't know, a fire truck probably. <laughs> Oh, or, uh, actually, a bus, it. something that could something that could fit people in it. Something like Dawn of the Dead style, like deck out a bus, so you can uh, protect yourself and carry multiple people. So that'd be good. Um, for me, I would actually say probably the Baymore, the Claymore, um, from Dark Souls, and I would actually go with. And this is a one piece reference and somebody's going to get it. Um, I would go with the. I think it's called the invisible fruit, invisible. whatever uh, the doctor has that makes the zombies Mora. Uh, uh, Gecko Moria has a shadow yeah. shadow fruit. Yeah, the shadow shadow fruit, because you can make yourself disappear at any time. So that's good for stealth. Yeah, well, there's also somebody that has an invisibility fruit amongst his crew. Oh, that's right. This, uh, the way I'm drinking this kind of reminds me of an experience I had recently at work. Um, we got asked to go to a, uh, basically it was like, uh, one of the local high schools was having a, a tailgate for their football game. And it was cool because like a local church brought like food and parents were bringing food and they wanted us to stop. They asked if we could stop by, show the truck to some kids. Um, and it was, it was awesome. Uh, cause you know, let like kids crawl up in there. There were all ages. And, uh, so I let them honk the horn and it kept freaking out the parents. Um, and then I, uh, I was telling the coworkers, I've never been to a professional NFL game, let alone the tailgate before the mm -hmm. game where you're supposed to, you know, barbecue some food, get, oh, yeah. <laughs> get your drink on. And that's what I told them was like, I've never been to a pro NFL game tailgate, but I'd imagine that it's not very sober. And I was like, this is the most sober tailgate I've ever seen. And so we started <laughs> laughing about that. And then I kept noticing that a lot of the parents that were there, like I just saw like two of them kind of do the kind of like shifty, whatever's all. 
tracking them. And these parents walked out to one of the vehicles, like formed the human wall. And then you just see behind him. Oh, gosh. Oh, goodness. So, <laughs> so what a role reversal that instead of high schoolers sneaking out to grab a drink, some of the parents just stepped away to have like a little sip before the high school football game. And they were wow. trying to keep it hidden. I was like, wow, full circle. Wow. wow. I, I laughed. Very interesting. <laughs> parents will be parents, right? I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. I've never. No I've judgment. Never Right. I've never been to one of those. My, I've act, I've never been to an NFL game myself either. Have either of you? I have. You multiple have? times. Yeah. Ooh. To the, uh, in Colorado? Uh, in Colorado, in Arizona, um, I think in, yeah, in Texas. Uh, the one I went to in Arizona was because my dad went to high school with this guy who no not high school he went to college with this guy who started his own charting company mm -hmm. and all the nfl teams would use him so he's like here are here are the tickets here is the vouchers for the buffet line like we would literally go up and we would get served like we were part of the nfl families for free because my dad helped them out in charting these planes nice hell yeah I've only been to it's like fun. I've only been to a couple basketball games myself, but like hopefully one day. So first real question of the podcast. I know all three of us have pretty much played like all the Soulsborne titles for the most part. I yeah. still have a couple myself, but like oh, pretty much we've dove in there pretty deep. I'm really curious to hear all of your opinions on what you think the best Soulsborne game is and why. Mm. Starting off right away. Fortune? I'm I'm gonna say okay, this is a tiebreaker for me. It's gonna be close with Bloodborne and Sekiro, honestly, because Bloodborne, if you're looking for something to transition easily from Dark Souls to, um, I think it has the best mechanics, the best atmosphere. I mean, it doesn't have the best open world like Dark Souls one, but it just feels really clean. Um, Sekiro being from software, but being totally different from Dark Souls and Bloodborne has, in my opinion, the best mechanics, the best story, and the best scenery. Like, it is beautiful. And it's nice to it finally see a video game that isn't, like, dark. Mm. It also rewards you for being aggressive, mm -hmm. whereas the Soulsborne games punish you usually if you're like too hyper aggressive even the speed runners have to like stand back go one two three four hit yeah. um for me though it's got to go to dark souls 3 because mm -hmm. the scenery the plot continuing the bosses nameless king is the best boss in any of those <laughs> series uh and in turn dark souls 3 has dark to take souls it. 3. i'm actually fighting yeah. the nameless king right now and um he sucks. He's not a fan of it. <laughs> oh, the music and the fight. Okay. True, so true. Do you know the lore behind the Nameless King yet? I think someone spoiled it in my chat. Well, they didn't spoil it per se. Or gave an opinion. Um, they gave an opinion, but they didn't actually tell you why Nameless King is prominent in Dark Souls 3 because it has to tie back to Dark Souls 1. Kyle is best at explaining it. I'm well, I don't want to if you don't want it explained yet. You can wait until the Vate video prepare to cry <laughs> right. on it, which is super good. I, I think um, Kyle could explain it even better. Ha, well, would you like me to try? If you want to. <laughs> oh No, the, the longest story short is um, when they went to war against the dragons, the Nameless King was one of the main dragon slayers. Uh, who ended up befriending the dragons, allying himself, and was disowned by his father, the boss. What was his name Gael, or the boss in the first one? So, if you remember in Dark Souls One, pretty early on, I think it's after you cross the bridge with the dragon. Mm -hmm. um, if you go off to the right, there's three statues, but one of them was broken. Uh, that's because it's the king, his daughter, son. I forget the the mesh there. And then the nameless king, who becomes the nameless king, because disowned, written out of history books, you don't exist anymore. You never existed. Yeah. Wow. So hence the nameless king. So the nameless king has actually been hinted at through items and stuff like that since Dark Souls One. 
and the fact that they included him is absolutely beautiful and i think the fight is the fight took me a while it was really hard but i was so satisfied because there's something satisfying about beating a hard boss that you don't cheese fortune hey, they don't shut spend up. three hours cheesing when you could have just beat it normal okay fortune. you I'm know what that's you know probably what? why Sekiro's you know number two for you, you know not what? number one. You know no. no. At least I finished one. video games. You haven't finished Mortal <laughs> Shell. You haven't finished Ghost of Tsushima. You haven't finished Skyrim. So when you finish games, then you can talk to me. Talk? Ah, there's the accent. That's what we were going for. I've got that on my <laughs> Piss Off Fortune bingo. <laughs> Uh, that was the free space. Get the Boston accent, the talk. Uh, excuse you, my dad's from upstate New York. I know, he's from we New York. We don't sound like them blue collar Bostonians. Have her correct Boston and New York was my corner space. So I, thank you. I, I think the biggest thing I'm struggling with on the Nameless King is the first phase with the dragon and the camera. Mm. The camera is like messing yeah. with yeah. me. The camera's the biggest enemy. Um, I didn't lock no, on gravity personally. gravity is the biggest enemy. <laughs> But I said he did lock on, but you just have to be careful that if you do lock on, you're gonna have toggle. to toggle between the dragon and then Nameless King. So mm. it's like no, I, so I I toggled it on and off. So like when he was flying further away, it was toggled. And as he got closer, I'd usually just turn it off to do like whatever rolling I needed. Mm -hmm. Go in, hit him, finish. It's phase two. That's ugh. phase two sucks because you're just like I'm ready, and he's like. Oh, 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 you're ready? You're ready? No, he hits no, so hard. no, okay. Like every attack is like 50% health <laughs> off. I, I will yeah. say I was actually pretty happy that um, one of my favorite fights, and it's what the second phase reminds me of, is Artorius. Ooh. Oh, um, yeah. And in uh, Demon Souls remake, uh, so I'm imagining the original Demon Souls, there is a fight that is nearly identical to Artorius, and that boss has the worst name in the world, but oh, also yeah. the best. The penetrator. The, the penetrator. I love the penetrator. Penetrator <laughs> and Old King Alant were the only good bosses, in my opinion, in Demon Souls. Well, there's the one in Demon Souls. Was it King Alant? I forget. It's the old guy that, like, I tried to fight him way too soon, and my chat told me it was too soon, and I kept struggling and struggling, and I saw every time he did one particular, like, command grab attack, mm -hmm. um, where his hand glowed, I want to say it was green. Uh, like my chat just like I could <laughs> feel them like squirming like oh god no oh but I kept dodging it I was dying but I never got hit by that one attack and it turns out um it, every every time you get hit it removes a permanent level from you yeah that's the final key. You, so like, yeah you stay you stay level 67 but your stats show 66 65 so on and so forth so that's the most demon souls thing in the world. Uh, <laughs> I know. I love that no bonfires. Like you're literally hunting until like the next checkpoint. You're like, mm, please. Right. Save me. No, there were some bonfires. Yeah, but most of them were after you killed a boss, and then you had to go through the whole area, and that's so sad. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, I really want to replay those games. And yes, I have some games I need to finish. Ghost of, maybe I should just play Ghost of Sushi on stream again. You should. Like originally, I didn't do it because I'd go from like. 20 viewers in this game to three when I went to Ghost of Tsushima for some That's reason. That's why I just have viewership off. Like, I, I honestly, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I know. I actually, I, I took that advice and I turned it off. There's only one way I can see my viewership now, and it's if I look at the border. metric bar under. Yeah, but I, I like that metric or that bar. And um, actually, I want to I want to come up with new, like, alert. Like, yeah. Just mm -hmm. alerts. But I'll, I'll talk about that off of... Uh, off this i'm always i'm always trying to think of like clever ways to improve the stream mm. small ways one of the one of the things is like rewarding people that are there at the beginning because right at the start of my stream mm -hmm. after the hype trailer and the, like the five minute timer and the hype trailer i always start the stream doing something goofy and different I try not to repeat it's like today i came sprinting in and tackled into my chair because i was running late to my stream uh, he was he was like 20 minutes late <laughs> oh yeah well it would have been 12 except the light started messing up my new gpu was mm. making a loud noise so i just mm. reset my computer and it worked like everything that wanted or could go wrong was going wrong so i'm like <laughs> new gpu but yeah, I, which one did you get so my uh my best friend lewis gave me a gtx 1080 because nice. he he is one of those guys that like 
somebody, one of his, or one of our former roommates, I think, like, accidentally spilled a soda on his computer, like, on the hard drive oh, or, no. yeah. So, yeah. And his computer was already, oh, like, gosh. like, damn, I'd kill for this. So he's like, okay, well, it's not working and I want a computer. So instead of settling, he was making really good money at the time. Um, and he bought a tower for his computer that took two of us to lift. It is massive. Wow. And he Dang. got the, what's what's the newest one that like everybody's vying for? Like the 30s, 3080 or? Yeah, 3080 series or something. Yeah, he got the 3080 series on release at market price. Wow. Um, like ridiculous, like nice coolant system running through mm -hmm. it just crazy and i was texting him i was like oh crap hey i have a 950 i can't even play nick all-stars brawl with my old graphics card i couldn't stream skyrim which is why i stopped it because it was uh like i could play it but the streaming aspect wasn't working mm. and i hit him up I was like hey dude i'm trying to find a cheap graphics card that's an upgrade i don't have five six seven hundred dollars to drop do you have any resources? He's all, well, yes, I do. It's me. Uh, it turns out he still had all the parts of his old computer and it was just sitting there. And he's like, hey, let me let me hook you up. And he brought over RAM and that and installed it. I was like, I need to pay you. And he was big on like the, it's all good. Get me back later. We'll figure it out. Don't worry. I'm like, I am going to pay you for what you've just given me. He's like, <laughs> we'll figure it out later. I paid him. But hell yeah, dude. it was just. It was really nice of him. That is a kick ass. Lewis story, is man. such a good guy. Man, especially with GPUs now, like at this moment in time, they're just literally completely impossible to find unless you buy them mm -hmm. for like double the price. It's it's insane. Yeah. So I noticed the one I bought was going on like Amazon for like six, seven hundred dollars. Man. So, whoo! Man, there, there's like graphics cards that are used from like five or six years ago that are selling for like hundreds of dollars. It just doesn't make any sense. No, it yeah. really puts it. Right. Kind of stemming since we were talking about the Soulsborne games and which one was your favorite. And we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but I think this could be a really interesting conversation. Do you all think that games should have a difficulty choice? Or do you think it's better if some games are a set difficulty like the Soulsborne games? Ooh. That's going to be hot. Okay, so I actually... Do you think some should have different difficulties? Like if, for example, if you want to do like The Last of Us on like easy, normal or Metal Gear mode, Solid, you're it. seen and it's over. That's a great challenge. Or it's like Sekiro and really there is just one setting. Like there's no difficulty increase unless you do what the story tells you and you omit like getting giving pers this person such an item and then you make it harder for yourself like it amps it up yeah. twice yes as hard. fortune we've now clarified those are the two types of games control difficulty settings don't <laughs> control difficulty settings i'm proud of you i had to i'm hey, the one that was Kyle, like be nice between I'm the tired. lines so, yeah, so i'm the one that's like you. i'm tired be nice and i'm over here let's go to so, war what do you no, uh, like if sekiro had an easy mode like that or if dark souls no. had an easy mode no i don't think those kind of games should have an easy mode just because like people know them to be difficult games so i think uh, that would I, kind of take away from that hmm. i think so i'm what i would ask for makes it i think too much of a burden for a lot of game developers because i don't like when it's like i want this to be harder oh this zombie just hits a little harder now like there are some games where the difficulty might be like a change of layout, slight mm -hmm. change, like your 2D platformers. It's like, oh, all of a sudden, like there's walls or fewer platforms for yeah. you to fall on or mm -hmm. land on, stuff like that. And that's when I like if you control the difficulty, it makes it harder that way. More precise. Um, exactly. More, more precise, more challenging, but not in a tedious way you know because like um i think it was dark souls 2 was kind of guilty of this of like it made some bosses tedious but not hard because it was like they just have a hundred million hp and it's not hard it's just taking a while so if they like could Vendrick, find a, yeah yeah exactly if they could find a balance between you know it's like more hp and hit harder 
and actually like find a way to make the game genuinely more difficult, mm-hmm. but also much more rewarding in the process, then I'm all about it. Uh, and truthfully, I even even with all that said, like I don't mind the idea of games saying, uh, "Hey, you know." choose your difficulty because there are some people that just want the story they want to play a game for the story and i'm not going to take away from them by saying like no play hard games plus it is so brutally insulting i think god of war did this when you're struggling and you're struggling you're grinding you feel like you're getting close and it's like hey you're kind of sucking do you want to go to an easier difficulty (laughs) (laughs) valkyries Uh, yes Oh my or, god, I beat that Valkyrie Queen on the hardest difficulty. Oh gosh, no. And <sighs> that that's probably harder yeah. than like any Soulsborne boss. Or like right up there. The like yeah. the Valkyrie Queen on the hardest god give me yes. God of War mode is like Bloodborne on New Game Plus seven or something. It's crazy difficult. Yeah, I I originally started that. This was well before I was streaming that I played it. Um and some friends told me I started it on like normal or I forget how many levels of difficulty there are, but just below hard or the hardest difficulty. And uh, my uh, friends, fellow firefighters were like, are you kidding me? Play it on the hardest difficulty. Oh, like, no. here are, Good and friends. then I found out one of them was like, <laughs> we got to the Valkyrie Queen around all three of us like the same time. And it was like, dude, it took me like 40 hours to beat her. Oh, this is crap. It, it probably took me like six or seven. I think it took me a minute. Yeah. But I, I love innately. I love a good grind. Mm. Tyler, your sex tape. Like that's why I loved the Soulsborne <laughs> series so much. It was just like it was hard but rewarding. So yeah. Except for when Kyle was a dumbass and decided to play Resident Evil One on the hardest mode, and then he scared himself, and he's like, "Why am I? Why is this so difficult? Why are my resources limited?" I'm like, "Cause you decided to put it on the hardest mode ever." That was so dumb. Like <laughs> veterans of the game were like, "Oh, you don't start your first playthrough on the hardest difficulty," and I did well. I got right to the end too. Yeah. yeah, but it probably you extended the life of that playthrough by a week because it was your first playthrough. Oh, yeah. And then instead, I spent like three hours off stream and got to the exact same spot on the normal difficulty. Oh, I, I, like, I laughed. This so is hard. so easy. I think it's a I actually really like the idea. I was having some conversations with people on Twitter about this a few days ago about like, I think game developers should have the final say when it comes to difficulty Mm -hmm. decision in the game and there are definitely some people who are very aggressive on the side of like no you just gotta get good and that's plain (laughs) and simple and then other people are like you're enabling certain people to just not be able to experience this game or like certain people with you know maybe they don't have the reflexes for it or the patience or the time or whatever like those people will not get to enjoy games like bloodborne or sekiro or dark souls or hollow knight or these really difficult games because of how steep the difficulty is on it Um, i was meant to play hollow knight on stream that's a good one but i i I really do think that like (laughs) The developers should have the final say and if they come to the point where they're like you know what this is going to be a game that is ex- very difficult and it's mm-hmm. just, like maybe 30 or 40 percent of people are not going to be able to play it but that's going to make the people who do play it and who do go- get good and who actually beat the game there's going to be such a sense of accomplishment and a camaraderie yeah. between everyone like all of us can be like that same level of hype knowing we beat orphan of cause and bloodborne <laughs> and how difficult that boss is because we all shared that difficulty whereas if like one of us played it on easy mode we wouldn't quite be able to relate as much you know i can agree with it and i think it's up to like the ultimate artistic or interpretation of like or the artist gets the should have the final say like yeah it is their art ultimately it is their art and if they're saying hey we don't want to add a difficulty setting because difficulty or being difficult is part of the art again souls born um i'm all about it and but i i definitely if like i had to choose right now difficulty settings or no play it as is get good i'm going to go with the difficulty settings because again some people just want to enjoy the story and after playing games like to the moon do you think it would that, be 
Do you think it'd be different oh. if games like Dark Souls and Bloodborne, not saying they don't have a story, because like they do have a story, but like if they were more in your face with the story, it was more cinematic, it was more like Ghost like of Tsushima Final or Final Fantasy or Last of Us, where there's just this epic, like you're a part of a journey. Do you think if they were more <sighs> in that kind of line of thought, then maybe having a difficulty setting would make sense? Yeah, but then depends? it would be like a different kind of... Uh again artistic approach because mm. what the Soulsborne games do really well Sekiro being actually still being included in this yeah um Sekiro had more blatant of a story and even then come to find out there's a lot of behind the scenes that you need to research but like Dark Souls mm. was really good about like you've got to earn the story if you want the story you've got to want it I played through the entire first game not realizing what the plot even was same and everybody's like why why is everybody crying over this dog sif i don't get it okay whatever but like so i think if they made it more in your face and it would just be like a different again artistic approach and so maybe it would be more fitting to have a difficulty mm. like choose your difficulty I yeah know. i'm sorry i just i love the way they handled it like you said there was camaraderie over the fact that we did it right so yeah, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I mean, and even in that sense, it, I've never really played a game like the, the Souls games where, how you phrase it, like you have to earn the story. Like every game I've ever played is very in your face with story, like Final Fantasies or mm -hmm. Last of Us or Halo, or I mean, even like Hollow Knight and stuff. Like they are very character prone and tell you the stories. And this is almost just like the story's already happened. And now you're kind of piecing together what happened in the apocalypse. And you get like little hints here and there. It'd be like if the yeah. apocalypse happened and we're rummaging around the world, like what happened here in this city or what happened over there? I don't really know, but I have, you know, letters and newspaper articles and like little things to kind of piece it together. <laughs> What do you mean there were four known dragon slayers and right. Hornstein was one? And it's like, well, you had to pick up this sword and read the yeah. item description and not just check its damage right. or find this random banner or item and read it. Like the fact that people have made YouTube careers off of playing the games and just taking detailed notes of ev what everything says and like piecing it together like a giant web is I'm sorry, I freaking love the Dark Souls games. They're great. <laughs> yeah, but it's even better with Sekiro because Sekiro is so different and it actually... Does she sound more quiet now? Story. Am I quiet? Hello? Maybe a little... Oh, I think it's sounding better. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Might you're fine. Been a little bit. Kyle's like freaking me out. Like, I'm like, <laughs> No, you're good, Fortune. Sure? <laughs> Maybe this is Kyle's way of getting back to you. You know what? Psychological. He's not. No, you're not paying. You are not living rent free in my head. I'm coming for you. No, I said it's mine games. Oh this is an old commercial. Um, what I really enjoy about Sekiro is the fact that it's different than all the other from software games because it actually has a story. Mm -hmm. And it was different because I was like, well, I have so many questions. Like, what are we doing as the Shinobi? Like, what's their objective? And it just story tells so well. And all the bosses that you encounter, um, you get like a little memory clip of them and it gives you like their backstory, which is refreshing because I'm like, for once I don't have to Google anything. Yeah, like who is this Ornstein and Smau character? No, they just kind of tell I you more. I call Pikachu and Snorlax because I was just like, <laughs> I don't are. know how to say it. <laughs> very true, very true. So here's another one that I think could be more of a controversial take. Oh, I think God. a lot of these are going to be controversial takes, but they're Do really going to be good conversations in them. Stop flexing, Kyle. I'm scratching, <laughs> scratching the back. <laughs> oh, my bicep still hurts. When it comes to gaming, there are gamers out there in the world that consider mobile games to not be real games. What are both of your thoughts on that? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Any opinions? Mobile games or video games, get rid of pay to win. Yeah, get rid of pay to win. And I mean, if they're like saying that they are a full on like nerdy gamer but they only game on their mobile phone i'd be like i mm, i don't know about that one well here here's my thoughts i try to always give the benefit of the doubt um what if they don't have access to much else or they're busy and so the only time they get to game is when they're out and about on the phone you know it's like some i was talking to a guy very recently who works with my mom 
and he uh, picked up one of the like kind of set it and forget it uh, mobile games like mm -hmm. by having it open or by like choosing your next task it does it or starts prepping it while he's doing stuff and he was a very very busy man so he was so proud of like what he'd accomplished in this game and it's kind of like an afk arena style game and he's like oh and he was finding out i'm a gamer he wanted to show off and brag to me like i'd never played this game this particular one he was talking about i'm trying to remember what it was called but he was so proud of his accomplishments in this game and in reality it's like yeah he chose some actions spent an hour doing work quickly popped it back open chose his next couple actions got back to work so i would absolutely say mobile gaming is gaming um and i feel like the pay to win comes because you know developers have to make money too but yeah. come on tone it back just a notch don't make it like cool if you drop 500 dollars, nobody will ever beat you <laughs> versus if you don't pay anything you'll never beat anybody yeah yeah it's true. Yeah. Just my thoughts. I actually think just like gaming in general is just more of a philosophy than it is like what specific console you're playing on. So, I mean, I, I would consider grandmas playing Candy Crush on their phone to be gamers. I'd consider people who are playing chess to be gamers. I consider mm -hmm. people who play PC and Xbox and Switch and all of that to be gamers. So, um, oh gosh, here he comes with the glasses again. <laughs> Well, but whenever I hear people say like mobile games aren't real games, that always does like frustrate me a little bit. Cause I just think like, if you play a game, if you get some kind of enjoyment between just like putting pieces together and puzzles or, or chess or whatever it is, I consider mm -hmm. that to be gaming. It's like more of a culture. It's like more of a, a human philosophy rather than it is like you're playing on switch versus playing on a, a phone. Uh, I would I would absolutely agree with you in that regards too. And you know, I the argument I like to make when people are like, mobile gaming's not gaming. I'm like, hey, they have Final Fantasy Tactics is available on mobile. I got it. Um uh, there's some great like RPG dungeon crawlers mm. that are on mobile. My brother played Digimon World on oh mobile God. through an emulator. <clears throat> so <laughs> I'd say mobile gaming is a gaming. Yeah. I, I like your mobile thought there. Game, it's a philosophy. Uh Clash of Clans, I think, was the last mobile game I played. Clash of Clans. I have a, fun, I have a yeah. funny story about that, actually. Um, when I was getting into the department, I... Oh, it, you told me this one. I remember. Yeah. So I, there's four steps to getting hired, and the first one is a written exam that you have to pass, and that usually like drops 50% of the applicants because it's like a reading and comprehension kind of thing like hey do you know how to multiply fractions do you know how to do you know how to divide fractions mm -hmm. crap we haven't done this since grade school um but while i'm sitting there like in my suit ready to go take a test with hundreds of other people in here and i'm just sitting there nervous all of a sudden because it was at our fire academy some firefighters showed up and one of them was on their phone and he said, hey, do any of you guys play Clash of Clans? <laughs> and like some guys were like, yeah, he's like, I can personally guarantee you a job in this department if you join my clan. And my immediate <laughs> thought was, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I need to download this. I need to get on this right now. I was like, wait, he's full of it. I bet he's full of it. And of course he was. I don't remember who it was that actually said that. Um, like, oh, I wish I could so I could run into them and bring it up but yeah <laughs> oh my i just God. thought it was kind of it was cheeky there was a point that like every other firefighter in my department was playing that game <laughs> it's a good time killer i never did though it's crazy to think now like games that like a, a good one i always think about is final fantasy 7 that game back in the day took three discs on a PlayStation 1 to play, and now you can download mm. it in two minutes on the App Store, and it takes up just oh. like three gigabytes worth of your storage or whatever, and now you can just play through the entire game on your phone, and it's m just mind-blowing to me. Like soon- Same thing with the PlayStation too. Like literally, you can just download it and play it. Right, right. Like who knows in like five years, soon we'll be able to play, I don't know, Elden Ring on our phones. <laughs> Probably. Dude, I Can you imagine? Actually, God, I'm so excited I for Elden Ring. I to play so badly. I don't know if anyone remembers the original Duke Nukem. Like, I oh, am yeah. of course. wanting to play that so bad. That would be awesome. That would be, that would be a good game. Is, uh, yeah. 
I keep hearing like Duke Nukem stuff um, on like audio pop up on TikTok. And it always cracks me up because Duke Nukem had like some of my favorite quips. Many games like I'm in my bed, you're in yours. One of us <laughs> is clearly in the wrong location. God. Oh, I love I love games goodness. that have like a good sense of humor. Exactly. Actually, you can bust that is sword. probably your best drawing ever for once in your life. A cleaver. Like a Pablo <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Here is one that I'm really interested in hearing. Between the oh, two boy. of you, who would win in a battle royale game together? And what battle royale would you challenge each other to play if you had to? <sighs> So we need to play each other in a battle royale game? Yes. Well, we actually have played together in a battle royale when Call of Duty um, came out. Like, not this last one, but the previous one. We had done the battle royale, but it, we, we sucked at it. <laughs> I got ran yeah. over by, like, a Hummer, and then Kyle just got, like, yeeted into the air. My back hurt after those games. <laughs> yeah, some people are so good at like Whatever. Apex and, and Warzone. He carried me one game. I carried him one game. It switched. Maybe equal That's then. Fine. Maybe equal then. Yeah, if it comes to a shooter, I'm not that good at shooters. If we're doing a battle royale, um, especially if it's like a real life battle royale, hell, give me Hunger Games against her. Let's go. I'm ready for this. But uh, that'd be cool. In regards to video games, ooh, I'd love to do like a if there was a Smash Bros. battle royale, that'd be fun. Well, dope. I've been asking you to help me with melee, so I don't even know if you would go against me on Battle Royale. You know what's funny, actually? I remember reading way back when, uh, this this is like so old school and obscure, David probably doesn't even remember. Uh, for those listening, and David is my twin brother. Um, it was back when like Street Fighter Alpha 2 came out, or Alpha 3, yeah. so like 20 years ago, and I was reading about... Uh, I read it wrong as a kid and I thought it said like open world fighter <laughs> and I thought like that is amazing and I so I had all these ideas of like VR at the time well before VR of like playing a Street Fighter style game and running around a world world or like WoW style and like getting into Street Fighter style fights against other people to rank up and skill up stuff like that so I choose a like fighting game battle royale if that was a possibility. <laughs> I That'd feel confident cool. I could take fortune. <laughs> I would actually kind of go with that, like, like fighting battle royale, but I would choose Mortal Kombat because be cool. I remember back in the days when you didn't have a menu to show you what your combos were. You're like, you literally had a pamphlet and you had to remember it. You're just like, okay, so I have to do this in 10 seconds or else I'm not going to get the fatality. So. Oh, my I brother and I had this strategy guide for Mortal Kombat 3 because two kids in our neighborhood were walking around and they saw my brother and I like eating pizza. Like we're in our front yard just eating pizza and they're like, we want pizza? We want pizza? Yeah, give us pizza. <laughs> and I jokingly told one of them, it's like, hey, you have the Mortal Kombat 3 strategy guide. We'll give you pizza for that. And he like bolted home, <laughs> grabbed it, bolts back. I was like, and in my See? mind, I was like, I'm just kidding. Are you hungry? Do you need pizza? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. Give me that pizza. I'm like, Here's three or four slices. Pizza's life. Pizza <laughs> and then we went inside and like practiced every, yeah, we practiced every fatality, you know, cool, cooler. Uh, what was it? The cool combo, cooler combo or gots. I forget. Like there's the three menus. Mm -hmm. oh, I miss those days. Here's the what most important days. question though. Did the pizza have pineapple on it? Uh, that one did not. If I remember correct. That probably one either was pepperoni or cheese knowing how young they were. Are you team pineapple? This was like fifth grade or oh, something. So. so good on pizza. It pineapple is. goes on pizza. I'm not again. So here, and I, I tried <laughs> to I tried to explain this, this on stream. Yeah, I tried to explain this on stream, but if you enjoy eating something, like you like the flavor of it, who the hell am I to judge? I mean, I'll judge right. you, but who am I to stop you mm -hmm. from tell you? No, you can't do this. Like. Some people put like mayo on their pizza and I think that's disgusting, but you know what? More power to you. I agree. It's so weird how it's like such a thing. Cause like the sweetness of pineapple and the savoriness of like pepperoni, like it's so good. Right. Are they just so made for funny. each other? Yeah. Oh, I do totally ham and pineapple though. Mm. Totally made for each other. Should like, try pepperoni. I, 
is good. I can't get over the fact that still my best friend, Mizzy, and I love her to death, she dips her chicken nuggies and french fries in mayo, and I'm just like, no. No, you know what? I've seen that before. I'm, the I've, fries and mayo especially is like a not, not the end of the world. Yeah. Fries deserve ketchup. Chicken you, nuggies deserve... You dip your fries in your shake, though, if you have one. If I have a Frosty, yes. Yeah. A or Frosty is a shake, let's you know, be honest. When their ice cream machine is working. Wendy's or McDonald's? McDonald's never works. Wendy's. When, I was like, McDonald's doesn't work, so I'll go Wendy's if you're asking <laughs> which one do I pick. Yeah. But spicy chicken nuggies, always. Mm, always. I couldn't good. tell you the last time I ordered food from McDonald's, but their iced coffees I get semi-regularly. Yeah. Your iced coffees are like so sugary and blonde. I'm like, dear gosh, how much coffee's in there? This much? That's how wifey likes her coffee. She's been getting, I've been making her, she's so particular now. She wants like a specific amount of almond milk. We're like really into almond milk right now, oh, which is no. actually really I I love good. almond milk. It's what I get now. Yeah. And then she has eggnog in it. And then she does like caramel sauce and oh, cinnamon no. and then oh, the gosh. espresso. So I'm just nope. making this and I'm just like, this looks just get it away from me. But if you like so it, what you're saying is wifey should go to Dutch bros because that's exactly probably, how they make probably. Did, you make, like did you make a tweet coffee. about that a few days ago? Like Dutch yes, bros doesn't make sense. Mizzy was like, she was how feisty. dare you? I love Dutch bros and I'm like yeah if you want like 90% sugar and a drop of coffee like I want to taste my coffee I actually ended up making a coffee at work the other day that like some of the guys who uh enjoy their coffee black and you know have bad habits such as such as chewing it's like coffee black you don't need creamer <laughs> and I I've made a coffee since we didn't have a rookie there who like Always keeps a fresh pot made. I was like, oh, I'll make it. Hey, you guys do two things of the ground uh, coffee beans, right? Yeah, yeah, two's fine. And I, apparently I made it like a, a stacked um, amount in there. And we had it. And I mine was watered down with creamer. And even I was like, Buzzing. oh, this is strong. <laughs> and uh, I looked over at Rob, one of the other guys who drinks a black. And he's like, like just trying to slowly nurse it. He's all, this is coming from me. This might be a little too strong. <laughs> I, was I like, like yeah. that bitterness, though. Like, just <sighs> a little bit of bitterness. I prefer sweet. Uh, I know you so do, because you... Okay, so this was for Kyle's birthday. I got him a one-piece hat, and I got him Jaffa cakes. Guess how many days mm. it took him to eat all those Jaffa cakes? Not very long. Two days. <laughs> Jaffa cakes he are good. He basically ate, like, the two sleeves, one a day. He's like, these, these are pretty good. Well, I said, I, I have the hardest time like cutting and toning up and eating healthy because I'll eat healthy. I have meal preps right now and everything. And I'm just like, oh, one of night? the guys brought ice cream. Is it at nighttime? Like before you go to bed, like the ice cream just before bed kind of it thing? It could be like eight in the morning or like we just got back from a call and one of the guys like, I want ice cream. I'm like, cool, ice cream. At eight in the morning. Let's go. I just I just like sweets. Kyle is like the type of person, if you whisper something he's been thinking about into his ear, he's like, yes. I'm sold. <laughs> oh, usually, son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> uh, actually, for me, it's usually the other way around of like, I'll just be like, hmm, I want Sonic. And all of a sudden the guys are like mulling it over. 30 minutes later, it's like, hey, do you guys want Sonic? Yes. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I do. You know what the worst I'm is? I'm just like, Every time I go see him, I'm like, wax? And he's like, French toast. Ooh. It's always the I've worst when you're like a little bit hungry, like not like fully starving, but you kind of got like a little hunger to you. And then you see like an ad for any place in the world. And you're just like, wow, all of a sudden I'm really craving that. You know <laughs> it what's funny? So I effective. Feel... It is. Yeah. Advertising works. Um, a friend of mine who she is much smarter than i am so i trust her but i don't know the science behind this or if it's true but uh, apparently like when i'm really really craving like chocolate like really craving sweets it's that my body is craving she said it's that my body is craving protein probably and i'm like you know anytime i'm really craving chocolate i'm hungry usually and i haven't eaten the best that day so since i've been better about like eating you know, X amount of ounces of chicken a day and stuff like that. I haven't craved chocolate or sweets as much. 
I don't know if she said that just to like, you know, get you thinking. Do the uh, yeah, do the uh, um, placebo the effect on me. But if she did, it worked. No, but it's true. Like the more protein you eat, it keeps you full and satisfied longer. Um, to where you're not craving certain things. So I always weigh out how much I'm eating as far as protein, as far as my good carbs, as my vegetables, to one, make sure that I'm not overeating and to also make sure that I'm staying satisfied. Yeah, yeah. Food is incredibly important. I'll, and make sure to eat. Yeah, we, even like I, I used to, uh, my wife and I had a really bad habit of like sweets right before bed. We had, we would have mm -hmm. like I, when uh, going through sober October now and not and cutting off like very specific things from our life. I've really tended to notice how many things just kind of lined up. Like we'd have coffee in the morning and then we'd have this and then this and then and it's just like a domino effect that just falls down and it would always end with like a little bit of sweets right before we go to bed. And I don't know if it's because I cut out alcohol and like the weed and stuff, but like this whole month, we have a thing of ice cream in our uh, in our freezer and we just like- I didn't know you smoked. Oh yeah. Yes. Like He calls it the day. Washingtonian veggies. The Washingtonian veggies. I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe I've just missed those portions of your stream. Not that there's anything against it. In fact, so I, uh, I, I tweeted about this recently, but I had like oh, yeah. my million dollar firefighter business idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait, have you seen the Marvel movies or no? Uh, I've seen most of them. Have you seen infinity war? I have. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, one. yeah. <laughs> so I decided as a firefighter, um, I'm not allowed to smoke weed or do drugs, obviously, but uh, weed is the big argument one because it has great, like it does great things to help with stress, PTSD, but alcohol is anxiety, fine. stuff like that. Yeah, but alcohol is good, right? Um, so I said as a firefighter, I need to open up a dispensary and call it the Soul Stone because I guide others to a treasure I cannot possess myself. That to quote cool. the red skull from infinity cool. war i just i'm too lazy to open up a dispensary which would take i've i've talked to the owners of one and like the amount of work it takes just to be compliant because if you're ever not yeah. compliant on even the smallest thing you shut down so yeah. i'm like meh i'll stick with streaming it's very 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 tightly regulated and I, it would actually be cool to do like like a firefighter themed dispensary where you hire like Ex firefighters, that could be pretty dope. Be what pretty oh cool. God! If it was, if it was former firefighters, retired firefighters, yeah. they'd smoke on my stash. <laughs> uh, every every firefighter I've talked to that's retired, like they'll come in like two months after retirement with a big old beard, eyes still bloodshot, and it's like, so what have you been doing with your retirement? It's like getting really really high <laughs> like one of them was telling me like he does it as like a humidifier so he's just chilling with his humidified weed wow. like vapors hitting him while he watches netflix all day like the new hot box yeah i was like <laughs> i've got like 18 years until i can fully retire and i am counting the seconds because that is going to be me i'm going to fly out to use and be like yeah teach me you know you know i'll definitely say though <laughs> I, I feel like at, maybe it's just because I haven't, you know, smoked in like two weeks or so. But yeah, yeah. I really do think that society, almost at this point in time, over glorifies all the positive aspects of marijuana. Mm -hmm. But there yeah. definitely are negative aspects that don't get talked about enough. You know, stuff from like people using it as a coping mechanism to escape in life, just like any other kind of drug mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, I mean, aspects in terms of like memory and how it affects people with their memory loss or how it affects like there are links tied to like schizophrenia down the road mm -hmm. if you have that in you so at least on the terms of marijuana I, I I'm very 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 pro just drug use in general yeah. if people want to go down that road and not just like alcohol or marijuana like I'm I'm very libertarian when it comes to just the spectrum of drug use I think people should instead just be more educated on it and the yeah. health oh. and the benefits yeah. and then if they do decide to go that route there is like rehab available if they wish to get out of it um, but a lot of times people use alcohol and gambling and marijuana and just so many things as more of a, mm -hmm. a crutch or an escapism for other aspects of their life that they should be focusing on i would agree actually you were talking about like the to to kind of back up a hair on the 
Yeah, sorry, I had to burp. On the downsides of marijuana, and it reminded me of something from South Park, um, where Randy was giving his son Stan a speech about weed, oh, which is really funny in hindsight because Randy ends up making a weed farm uh, <laughs> ten seasons later or something. But <clears throat> I had to pull it up because I didn't want to not do it, or I didn't want to not do it justice. But uh, they're talking about like the bad things and good things about pot, and he said, "Well, Stan." The truth is marijuana probably isn't going to make you kill people and it most likely isn't going to fund terrorism, but well, pot makes you feel fine with being bored and it's when you're bored that you should be learning some new skill or discovering some new science or being creative. If you smoke pot, you may grow up to find out that you aren't good at anything. Yeah. Uh, and I loved that quote when I first heard it because one, I mean, South Park, what the hell? But uh, it's, it's one of those that when people partake too much you can overindulge in a lot of things and such as the people i see at work who um take fentanyl pills like there are those who just do one on occasion in opiate because it makes them feel really good and they're super relaxed and i don't run on those people but it's the ones who keep abusing it yeah. that i end up running on and so in regards to marijuana it's like it's fine to partake it's fine to you know just enjoy it but like if you do it all the time almost around the clock and it becomes your entire basis of life you know all of a sudden it it can become a problem yeah I it agree. totally can but i think it all is within context like i know my parents were very like anti-marijuana until I sent them a video and this actually came from Colorado. This is um, when they discovered Charlotte's Web. I don't know yes, if you guys are the familiar with Charlotte's Web. Yes. Yeah. Charlotte was a girl in um, Colorado. Unfortunately, she passed like five years ago, uh, but she was a girl in um, Colorado who was like five and she was experiencing a hundred epileptic seizures a day and her mm. brain could not handle it. Her brain and her body were shutting down and this um, dispensary was like, well, we know the owners of this like weed farm and they have a strand, but you know, they, they're not gonna sell it to you. It's called the hippies disappointment because it literally has 0.5% THC. CBD, they gave yeah. it to her and it rerouted the electric neurons in her brains and she was now experiencing 20 epileptic seizures a day so that was huge for her and she lived to be about i want to say she was in her teens when she died finally so that prolonged her life yeah and at least with marijuana i i feel like as as i've learned more and more about it the thc side of it can because there, there's so many cannabinoids that are within mm -hmm. the plant the thc side is the the fun side the get you high side um but it's really the CBD side of it that has all that medical help and medical benefits and stuff. So, yeah, what there's I don't think there's anything. I mean, I'm pro drug mm -hmm. like libertarian, like I said, kind of on the whole aspect of it. But like CBD is incredibly, incredibly powerful and that can have major help throughout our entire society um, as it becomes more and more common to use, whether it is for seizures or or pain relief or headaches or just just mm -hmm. anything. Um, and it's not addictive and and you don't get that high from it. It's not psychoactive in any sense. So, yeah, the Charlotte's Web story is super fascinating and and yeah. just absolutely such a, a stepping stone that needed to be had to really push society more in that direction. So there's a lot of a lot of pros couple cons that maybe don't get talked about as much but there's a lot of pros to it <laughs> I, and i would so i would agree with all that which is where i'm kind of like firefighters are super like for it but the problem that we're facing is there's no good way to test if it's in your system mm. like or, or if it's affecting you currently you know we don't have a breathalyzer for weed so it's like you know, you had a brownie and you feel really good for a night. Four days later, you go to work. You're fine. Two weeks later, you get a random drug screening. Yep. It's like, oh, there's weed in your system. Yep. Well, bye. Yeah. Yeah. It binds to fat cells really, really effectively and can stay in the system for like 30 to 45 days sometimes. Um, and even like yeah. strands of hair, like I've heard some people say like they can get a strand of your hair and months later they can tell if you've had it or mm -hmm. not. 
so yeah it's weird that we as a society at least when it comes to that like we're so pro pharmaceutical use and so pro mm -hmm. alcohol and so pro cigarettes and then just like more natural substances like marijuana or or i mean even when it comes to the stuff of like psychedelics and stuff things that are just literally grown in nature we're just mm -hmm. so anti against and and stuff so not to uh not to go too far down that no, rabbit hole no, but, but like no but it's it totally true. true like yeah. it's so true and here's the thing is like everyone thinks that weed only affects you one way but it's totally different like and per i can person. say from experience because i am a highly anxious person so when i was using marijuana it actually calmed me down and like i don't tell many people about this but i was in a really like toxic abusive relationship just recently and so my coping was to use a little bit of cbd and thc because i was having some night terrors i was just reeling in the moment and i wasn't healing myself i wasn't letting things go and i needed something to calm the voices right right it, it can definitely help so much with that and and i would definitely say it's probably a lot better if you are if you are going to go down the something that's going to help you or to alleviate that pain or or something mm -hmm. to just kind of i don't want to say escapism but that i mean escapism in a sense it refocuses you yeah that's what it did for me like it gave me moments of clarity to where i could actually focus and think instead of just being stuck inside myself yeah and it's definitely I think most people can agree it's probably better to go down that rabbit hole than something like alcohol or cigarettes oh, or yeah. gambling or like mm -hmm. a sex addiction or just whatever. Sure. I mean, even like sugar, like going down like a sugar rabbit hole of, of addiction, like it's not without its that's, cons, but yeah. That's something I saw in uh, a couple of the episodes. Like I hate, I hate watching the show, my 600 pound life. But sometimes it's on at the fire station, so we're gonna watch it. And uh, but there was one guy who actually fell for that. He talked about growing up, he was heavily abused by his parents. Yeah. Um. Just terrible abuse, and so his only coping mechanism was to eat. And when he finally got out of that situation, all he knew how to cope with or cope was to eat. Yeah. And he would eat and eat and eat and eat. And it's like, oh. Yeah, some of those are just so heartbreaking. But there was one girl, I think there was this one TikTok and I was cracking up laughing. This girl liked to make excuses about why she was 600 pounds. And the doctor was like, you need to eat fruits and veggies. Well, that's really hard because I'm really picky. And he flat out said to her, you're not picky because you're 600 pounds. Like, it's clear, you're not picky. I, I hate watching that show because I deal with it at work in general. Um, and I have, a lot of opinions on it but it's one of those like i've pulled my back trying to pick somebody up off the ground who was being extremely rude about it and i got yelled at for showing clear signs of struggle that i was having a hard time picking up this 500 plus pound individual uh four of us were struggling and she had a lot of choice words for us for making her feel bad for having a difficult time lifting her and i know this isn't everybody but it's one of those like that one experience kind of left a bad taste in my mouth so now when i see stuff like this i've had multiple kind of like multiple calls that involve like lift assist similar to this but that one just was enough to make me go like ah no and I that's just... totally valid like you have those bad calls where you know they're calling you every name in the book and then you have the cute ones like that granny who was like i'm gonna shoot my shot on you and it's just a oh there there have been recent grannies that shoot or have shot their shot uh towards us and i'm like maybe they see you know TikToks. what no this it's like you know what you know what feeling up on his abs she's like i don't know i could die tomorrow so <laughs> oh no that that was straight up it we were carrying her around and around or out on it's called a mega mover but it's basically a big durable blanket with handles that we use to carry people out of uh buildings when a gurney won't fit or they're upstairs stuff like that um and we don't want to use what's called a stair chair so yeah we had her on a mega mover tiny little old grandma probably in her 90s and she started touching my abs and said she's like pretty much that like she needed she wanted to shoot her shot she's probably going to die here soon and she wanted to know what it was like to touch a firefighter's stomach and i'm like 
Conversely, it was like three weeks prior to that, I was lifting somebody who was about 600 pounds and she was trying to do the same thing, but she was like <laughs> getting in there, grabbing to the point oh of like God. tickling, but I was strained, so it hurt. And I told her, I was like, you need to stop. She's like, oh, I just want to feel. I'm like, I'm going to drop you. Like, stop. I'm going to drop you and you can figure out your own way home. <laughs> right, right. No, well, it was like, I didn't want to drop her, but I was struggling. So I was like, please don't tickle me right now. This isn't good. Versus the other lady was like 80 pounds soaking wet and four of us carrying her. So I was like, adorable. It, uh, yes and no. I, think, I thought it was funny in hindsight, but it's adorable. Just kind of like your granny and the whole, uh, my grandson's was like a playboy. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. I think, I feel like we talked about that the last, uh, podcast. No, you didn't. You didn't talk oh, exactly God. about how your granny wanted to Yeah. So, so here, I'll, I'll say the full story then. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> here we go. Basically my brother and I were raised by our granny. Who's an absolute saint of a human being. She's a and she took us to Walmart to, we really wanted a PlayStation um, growing up. And this was like a few years after it's released when the prices have gone down and it was more affordable. And so she took us to Walmart to get one and we were so excited and she knew we had Game Boys and we wanted PlayStation. And yeah, she goes up to this poor kid working at Walmart in the electronics and says, yeah, hi, my two grandsons would like a Playboy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. And the the shock and embarrassment on his face, thinking she was trying to buy Playboys for her two young grandsons. And we're both like, PlayStation, 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 to try and like frantically correct her. And he was like, oh, 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 yeah. Makes more sense. Here you go. <laughs> oh that's, god that's the tamer of the story don't zeph he'll have to tell you after the conference call but uh ask about when she wanted to hit on a server that comment remember kyle oh yeah david's oh, better boy. at telling that story but yeah <laughs> it was hilarious i was cracking up laughing i was like get it granny get yeah. it you know one thing i was kind of stemming back like a little bit on the the whole like uh talk earlier about like weed and food and and alcohol and stuff like that it mm -hmm. kind of Vices. yeah kind of what you're saying reminded me i watched a documentary a couple nights ago and there was something that kind of i feel like has changed my perspective on the world in the sense like everything that has happens in the world there's always like two ways of looking at it. there's like a micro view and a macro view mm -hmm. in a sense of like anything in those situations that happens to you individually is valid and shapes your experience of how you see the world but there's yeah. also stats and statistics on a much grander broader scale of how it pans out across like multiple people throughout the world or um you know like over hundreds of thousands or millions of people so it's almost like a combination of the two when you have situations and i don't know of anything specifically but at least when it comes to substance abuse and and using stuff as mm -hmm. like coping mechanisms there's going to be the experience that you individually have and then the experience that like everybody has and both of the experiences are valid in that sense so that was just one thing i kind of wanted to, to touch on on that because that's made no, me sure. definitely think a little bit more um because i feel like sometimes when it comes to very i don't know hot topics or very controversial opinions some people almost like when you present them a fact like these are the empirical facts that have been proven scientifically by large scale studies some people get offended and they say like that's taking away from my experience and you're like triggering me or offending me or what like whatever they're going to say mm -hmm. and it's not that that's happening like those experiences you have in whatever facets are still valid it's just that's more of an exception in, o in an overall grand scheme of things rather yeah. than the rule it is the exception not the rule exactly, exactly. It <sighs> yeah I know yeah. it, it's a it's a hot. I'm like, Kyle's yeah. really thinking about this. Well, no, I, it's it's more of like I've got. I agree with you, so I'm like, I really don't have much more to add to that. Yeah, like I can I can agree, but I feel like in today's modern climate, the idea of facts not weigh or having as much weight to them, especially if it goes against your current beliefs or opinions, mm -hmm. really bothers me. So that's why I'm like. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna dive too much on this one. You know, not to dive 
too much on him but I, I feel like most people because I feel like I'm very similar to you Kyle like I mm -hmm. hate the idea of cancel culture I hate the idea of people being able to voice whatever they believe and some people just want to shut them down as opposed to listen and a lot of people I've talked yeah. to have very similar it seems like there are more people that align with that who might be silent who don't want to speak up for whatever portion of society wants to cancel them out mm -hmm. and, and the only thing I care about in all is just the idea of like freedom of speech and if you have yeah. an opinion that's very you completely disagree with me and we have very opposing ideas i i yeah. want to hear your perspective just like people in general like i want to hear your perspective i want to hear what you have to say i might not agree with it i might disagree with it vehemently and and not like whatever For aspects sure. of it but like it's still important to me that people have a voice to express their beliefs on and as long as they're like literally not bringing harm to somebody else mm -hmm. then i'm open ears to anything so i uh you know me i i love quotes and i often forget who say them but i love the quotes and the one that has to do with this that i i'm quite fond of says it's the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without agreeing with it Basically meaning like I, when people have vastly different opinions from me, there's one particular guy in the fire uh, station I work at who is like super, like complete opposite end of the spectrum for me on most beliefs and then some, mm -hmm. and he and I will sit down and have great conversations about like, why do you feel this way? Why do you think this way? And I'd love just digging into like probing his mind and figure out like, why does he believe this? Why does he do this? Why does he do this? And then I break his heart whenever I bring up like the inconsistencies with his yeah. logic and stuff. But uh, that's not my goal. My goal is that I love understanding why people think the way they do and why do you act this way and why, sure. why do you, why must you do this? And so like, yeah. it's, I don't know, it's just fascinating to me, but I do hate whenever it's like, I don't agree with what you're saying. So you're wrong and you're always going to be wrong and that's it and i'm going to try and speak louder than you or cut you off so your voice can't be heard i don't like that i agree i agree and isn't it interesting totally. sometimes a lot of those people you have those discussions with when you are listening to why they believe what they believe it's almost more of that individual perspectives they've had in life or maybe like a couple bad circumstances with a couple bad people shape mm -hmm. their entire beliefs rather than the overarching well these are the statistics from a grand yeah. macro scale like these are what like actually happens versus the couple bad eggs that you've experienced in your life and a lot of people no, don't so like true. hearing that <laughs> so not that yep. it like invalidates those bad experiences that they've had because those are no. their experiences but it's the rule versus the exception mm -hmm. yep so see i think i think uh something that kind of blows my mind now is that we i i dislike the expression let me preface it with this i dislike the expression you've changed used to be different because we should glorify improvement change changing mm -hmm. beliefs changing your opinions um because like for example my brother and i we were raised to have very different beliefs than what we do now. It's true. Very, very, very different. So like in regards to politics, religion, um, and especially hot button topics now, we are very different from the majority of our family in that regards because at some point in my life, I was taught uh, by my grandma to accept and to learn about people and learn others. And I, I really took it to heart and I started to see, oh, this is why they do this. This is why they do this. And I got an education and I learned how to study and fact check and, you know, really look into stuff. And my, I allowed my beliefs to be molded around my experiences with others and seeing like, oh, they're from this you know, this other religion from another part of the world and they've been so kind and they taught me about their religion, not trying to convert me, but just to educate me because I was curious. And in turn, that idea of like, I personally changed and grew because of what I learned and seeing how wrong I was about stuff. And instead now it's one of those that I feel like people are afraid to change. And then it's also you're shunned if you do change. 
And I wish that it wasn't that way because growth is beautiful and you should not be ashamed of educating yourself and trying to be a better person and the best you that you can be. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just a little tangent thought I no, had. <laughs> that, that was great. Like one thing that just like really, really infuriates me about like our modern society is people will find stuff like tweets from that you posted 10 years ago oh and my just God. like try to rip you apart and bring you down currently from yep. it. And it's like, it's like, I know me individually, I know I said stupid shit 10 years ago, five years ago, oh, yeah. yesterday, probably like my like mm -hmm. life in general is just always making mistakes. But if you learn from those mistakes, then you grow from them. And it's almost like society, well, some, some people in society like to tear down people for their mistakes rather than mm -hmm. see the growth that they've had and, and yes. see that maybe you said stupid things or did stupid things then, but like now you are a better person. You've grown, you've matured, you've developed different uh, opinions. Hopefully, hopefully you've grown yeah. and, and developed different yeah. opinions. And uh, yeah, it's just not, yeah, can I, cancel culture I, just blows my mind. I hate it. <laughs> I, I agree with that. And it, it happened semi recently to James Gunn. It happened yes. to a football coach uh, recently, although I don't know the exact details behind that one. But it's like, I don't know about you, but I was very different 10 years ago than I am now. And even looking back at stuff like, hey, 11 years ago, you posted this on Facebook. I look back at that like, oh, Cringe. God. <laughs> right. Oh, God, delete it. Delete it all. I hate it. And so, yeah, I would hope that if something like that ever happened to me, they'd be like, look at all he does. Look at how he changed. But too many people want to. Uh, oh, God, I think it was Burt Kreischer, the comedian, did a whole bit on getting offended for others. So many people want to get offended for other people who aren't necessarily offended. Yeah. And I don't get it. No, I don't either. But if you asked me 10 years ago what it was like being friends with Kyle, I would be like, it was hard because he would barely talk because he was so awkward and shy. Uh, maybe not 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Yes. 10 years ago, I was a little well, better. You still were kind of shy. Yeah. I mean, you and David obviously over gelled your hair for a while, <laughs> which most guys. Oh, dude, I did the LA looks like super like hard, flaky spike that yes. I could like break my hair in half. Oh. Yeah. God. They never did the frosted tips, but they used a lot of hair gel because I remember the crunchier, I, the better. Was, the crunchier then I was introduced better. at a, I went to, it was Genesis two, actually. Um, I went there and there was a, a player from England who I realized that I didn't have any gel or anything. And he's like, I have wax. I'm like, cool. So I went to go soak my hair and get it ready for the LA looks oh. gel look. He's like, no, no, no dry hair. You just kind of like rub it through them all just a little bit. Okay. And all of a sudden I was like, this is a game changer. This is, I look, it looks natural. And then I started losing my hair. I'm like, no, I just discovered you. Hair. You have a receding hairline. You still have hair. You can have my <laughs> hair. I'm, I'm ready to shave my hair off. You can have mine. <laughs> I've known him through many phases. I've known the twins on the phases of when they had spiky gelled hair. They had this like kind of comb back poof hair thingy majigabob i i've known Goku you when you hair. had really short hair i've known when you started like getting the receding and now you just shave it down with a little lip or whatever it was now i miss that you hair just shave it Dave now i just shave kind it has the little lip thing kind of yeah it's it's really starting to thin out though so that's why i'm like Meow. save save money not going to the barber years like, just go for it we, we own it right own it I'm getting better about it. That's why I said I'm going for like the Jason Statham, Mr. Clean kind of like you can look good bald, just be muscular. I'm like I'm not going for the rock, but you can it's easy to rock the bald when you're like a little more muscular, yeah, I think. You won't be completely bald in November because no shave November. Uh, oh crap. I might actually I was talking about starting that now and I don't know if I want to. I wanna so I'm supposed to actually have vacate. <gasps> I need to cancel my vacation. <laughs> Wait, what? I, I have a vacate. So at work, they always had us do vacation bids. So you bid on the days you want to go or have like your planned out vacation. You're like, I'm guaranteed this vacation spot for the year. And they always did the bids after you drew for your hunts. 
Okay. So all the hunters would put in for their hunts. They'd find out like, okay, I drew for this weekend. I drew for this weekend. And they could plan their vacations around that. I've never been hunting. So with the help of my coworkers, I put in for some hunts this year for the first time. But unfortunately, for the first time ever, they decided to have our vacation bids before the drawing. So oh. guys were just like, uh frantic vacation days and i hope it lands on one of the days that i put in for hunts so i put in a bunch of days in october and november because i couldn't get approved for any of the holidays because not enough seniority and um one of them was this next upcoming shift i ended up drawing nothing i got zero hunts i'm not going hunting this year sag but i uh, i have vacation and i need to cancel it because if i wait until tomorrow morning, I'll get in trouble. Uh, and it's easy to cancel, but I'm participating in No Shave November, Ooh. which <laughs> raises awareness for prostate cancer. And for me, the best thing I like to do is to, if I'm going to try and grow a mustache, is take time off and just let the beard grow a little bit and then shave everything but the mustache because this little wispy thing I have going on, I don't like. Do uh, you have facial hair as a firefighter? Like how, or no. how much? Or we nothing? we can have a mustache, but it guys used to rock the handlebars, but mm -hmm. we're not supposed to anymore uh, because beards interfere with our uh, SCBA mask, our self-contained breathing apparatus mask to breathe in uh, fire. We need that to have a tight seal, and a beard will interfere with that seal. Mm. So we're not allowed to have beards, which is why, like, when guys take their three months of uh, uh, paternity leave, like they'll they might clean it up but they stop by the station with like massive beards because they don't want to shave yeah. like this is their chance to grow one out like beards looking like yours kind of <laughs> beards and uh so like i want to take just two weeks to like really grow in a thick beard shave it keep the mustache i agreed well, be because you could do that for genesis because we're going to be out there for a while like five days Nope. I'm just saying Genesis just grow a beard. Like Oh no, that's what I do. I don't shave when I'm on vacation. Unless like I have to. Ooh, I need to put it for the Genesis that I won't get picked, but like sign up to do commentary. Yeah, because we're going to Genesis and I'm pretty sure we're gonna be in San Jose for like five days, so that gives you five days to grow a beard. Ooh. Beard hype Something like coming. That. Yeah, I no, it's hard to grow a beard in like two weeks though. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm I'm doing no shave November and you're about to see the mustache on stream and I I've hate it. I've already seen the mustache. I'm excited. I called him a Chester. Chester. <laughs> I'm excited for it. I hate it so much. I actually La saw the picture of it. I was laughing so last, hard. Last last year, like I had it out for like two yeah, weeks. Didn't get to stream much in that time. And then I shaved it, went back to work, or shaved it, streamed, went back to work two days later, and the crew was pissed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because we all agreed to do No Shave November, and I broke it. And I told them, I was like, da 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 da, -da for the stream, da 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 da. And they were like, uh huh, uh huh. So this year, I'm like, I don't know if you guys can it. see this or not, but. Don't show it. Oh! Don't! No! Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to click the. Call. That's gonna be the thumbnail. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I want Discord no. call over. No, I'm done. No. I, oh, I have a better one. I have a better one. Let me find oh, it. I have, I have a she's, better one. She's throwing Can I it kick all her out. from the call. She's throwing it please. all out. She's throwing it all. Fortune, please don't. Please Let's, don't. They're we'll gonna see it, it already. No. We'll save it. We'll this save. We'll save it. To, we'll save it till after the podcast. Okay. I look this so creepy. Better. I am going to punch you. <laughs> I tried to save you, Kyle. I tried. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> I sent you like the goofiest pictures I could because that was private fortune. <laughs> that well, was a one-on-one -on -one thing. Now we you know what kind of friend fortune is. I know. <laughs> trust fortune <laughs> with nothing. I know that, and she wonders why she doesn't get videos anymore. <laughs> literally oh, it was goodness. one of those i was like oh goodness oh, literally goodness. it was like okay cool she's one of my best friends in the whole wide world i'm gonna trust I've her with this goofy like, picture is like when i started working out and i was like super self-conscious about myself and i didn't yeah. save them no because i knew you would never like show them but i showed them on stream i don't care yeah speaking 
Hold um, on. So Speaking of streaming, though, I do have some more streaming game questions. If y'all are down, trying trying to weave off Ooh. of this and save you, Kyle. <laughs> I appreciate you. So trust is broken, Fortune. You broke it this second. You didn't text me back today. You opened it and you ignored it. Actually, I talked about that today on stream. The point of texting is respond at convenience. Yeah, but you left me on red. Like you shouldn't have just not opened it. Did I leave you on red? Oh, yeah, my God. it said open. You I gotta turn like, that red off. Rude. Just delivered. Just delivered. <laughs> it was Snapchat, so I was like, oh. I don't remember looking at it. Oh, I might have opened it right before I was streaming or I was driving. Yeah, Anyways, you, know you had a question about streaming. Yes. Why I'm sassy Fortune. and I'm just like, because you forgot. Fortune, I got a question for you. Okay. If you Hi. could only pick one, would you both rather have single player games for life or multiplayer games for life? Um. Multiplayer. Teams is better in singles. Yeah. That's hard because. Can never play multi a single player again. Or multiplayer. Multi, I love playing with people, but sometimes it's really hard to schedule. So I really do actually enjoy playing single player because I could just pick it up and play whenever I wanted. Yeah. In all, in all my years of competitive Smash Bros, I've always said that doubles is the absolute best. I think good teamwork is an art. So I like individual sports. I've wrestled for a long time. I like playing single player games on stream, clearly. But there's a beauty to good teamwork especially like a two-on-two -two or 3v3 kind of thing like the smaller the teams but still teams it is i i can watch almost any team's event and just lose my mind like any even if i don't know the sport i'll get into it if i see good teams going on especially doubles so yeah teams hey, for the win the melee. this is 50 bucks yeah I is need that to get for a the switch controller. No, this is for a uh, game co right, right. controller, and then but you have a, an adapter for uh, it. For, to get to like play Switch games with the GameCube controller? Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Or to play on PC. Yeah, because that's what I use for uh, Melee. I'm learning Peach because her movements are probably the easiest for me right now. Ooh, hell Martha's yeah. just too delayed. She definitely doesn't have easy movement, though. That's well, what's funny. It's easier than Marth. Marth feels very delayed and staggered. Do you ever play uh, um what what's the popular one smash yeah that's what she's talking about melee oh mm -hmm. gotcha gotcha that's the melee, best one in the gamecube Brawl and then ultimate what's the one that sword just came out on ultimate oh ultimate so there's what five iterations of smash bros now there's smash 64 um or just super smash bros smash 64 melee on the gamecube brawl on the wii uh smash 4 came out on the wii u i think it was and then ultimate came out on the switch so do you just mostly oh. play melee or do you ever try the other ones oh yeah i've played all the other ones and i competed in a few ultimate tournaments like major tournaments too and i did well i did pretty well but i always end up going back to melee because the movement feels so crisp mm -hmm. it's faster there's a reason that the competitive scene has been around for 20 plus years um and like is still going strong like it if anything it's getting stronger the new nickelodeon game they joked about might be the melee killer because they incorporate a lot of the same tech and a lot of same like movement and stuff and made their own but mm -hmm. uh, melee is going to be around for a long long time especially now that fans made it a viable online playable version of it yeah Ooh. so i got that's one. what she wants to use to play I got one for you guys. I think this What's could up? be pretty interesting. Do you think a lot of people think or seem to think that PC gaming is better than playing on console? Do you either of you agree with that? Is PC gaming the ultimate? I know PC Master Race and I have a few different thoughts on it. Um, my best friend Lewis always says, he's like, oh, I could play all that, ga all those games and more on mine. I could play those and more on mine. It's like, well, yes and no, you can minus the exclusives, but let's, let's assume all games available, all platforms. It's true. You can, but I spent $500 for my PS5, five, 600, whatever it was. And you've spent $5,000 on your computer and it's going to last you, but eventually you're going to need to drop another thousand or two, just upgrade it and another. So it's like, 
ultimately you're still spending a lot of money so the argument that the pc is better starts to get kind of null and void when it comes to that um but i guess in the end this is similar to sorry i'm kind of like trailing off of my thoughts i'm pretty tired uh, i i consider this the same question as mobile gaming like mm. Play what you love. I yeah. love playing on PlayStation. My twin brother loves Xbox. Um, some people love PC. Play what you have the most fun on. If you like playing first-person shooters with mouse and keyboard, absolutely go nuts. I like playing them with a controller, so I'll go nuts in that regards. No, and I question? totally agree. I totally agree. Um, you know, play what is easily accessible and works for you. But I will say that um, I've always grown up as a console gamer, so for me that was all I knew and as a streamer like I started streaming directly from my PlayStation because I didn't have a computer and that was easy and convenient all I had to do was buy a $30 cam and then a $60 mic and I was good to go um, and then eventually I upgraded so the fact that not only is your console available to stream off of which makes it super convenient it also can hold a lot like I had before I got my PlayStation 5 I got the uh, PlayStation Slim which had a terabyte of memory which is so convenient right now now with the ps5 you download like call of duty warzone and that's like a third or a quarter of oh the storage God, warzone I, takes uh, up so much space I some, i had an external hard drive before i even like got my playstation 5 i got yeah. a two terabyte one for like 60 bucks nice just because i knew yeah it doesn't seem like it has much storage there's like 680 no. gigs or something and with how big games are getting now right when i got that mine's already filled up and i the only ps5 game i have is demon souls on it oh gosh yeah, yeah. i'm surprised uh, mine hasn't filled up because i have Sekiro, bloodborne dark souls 3 god of war assassin's creed and marvel spider-man and miles morales Hmm. I have yeah. a lot of my... halfway through, Ooh, you... I'm halfway through Spider-Man, so I'm I'm gonna start Miles Morales next. Ooh. You just reminded me that my Fire Station, who are not except for other Kyle, are not gamers, are never satisfied. I took my PlayStation VR for them, downloaded a zombie shooter for them, and for a while they were hooked on it. Mm -hmm. Then I introduced them to uh, Mario Kart, which oh, yeah, everybody knows Mario cool. Kart. They played that religiously. Then. Uh, I stopped bringing it. I was like, just didn't want to pack it up. And then I started bringing the new Mario Golf. They're hooked on it. Then one of them brought up zombies. We don't get to play VR anymore. So I brought that. Nobody touched it. And they're like, why don't you bring uh, golf? I'm like, <laughs> and so finally, <laughs> zombies. It's I did. I did take. Yeah, I did take my PS5 down there once. And it was funny because one of the like super non nerdy guys had this talk with me. Like he is. Everybody at that station has a hyper nerdy thing that they love but they're closeted about like one of the guys who's a big old farm boy is the biggest lord of the rings fan i know one of the guys is a massive dune fan read all the books knows the lore loves dune not a nerd but the one that i have nothing on came up to me and this is like two months after i got my ps5 he's like i know what you have at home you know what you have at home. <laughs> you should bring it in so we all get to enjoy it because some of us are never going to get to play it. I'm like, <laughs> my PS5. Yep. And sure enough, they sat there playing like Assassin's Creed all day, like just passing off the controller like they're little kids again. That's like when not on calls, they were killing people in Assassin's Creed. And now that I keep taking Mario Golf, one of them's like, man, do you know it'd be great? is if somebody here actually owned a PS5 and would bring in something. I'm like, and I yell, I'm like, all you want to do is play Call of Duty. I'm not going to download it. And he's all, no, I want to play Spider-Man. I'm like, what? Spider-Man's great. He's all, great. He's all yeah, Spider -Man. Miles Morales looks like so much fun. I'd really like to just swing around the city and play as him. I'm like, so I've got to pack up my PS5 and yeah. take it to the station. Playing Spider-Man is like super relaxing, just swinging through the city. I'm just like, oh, this is so it is. nice. Doesn't it feel just so true, though, that everybody, whether even maybe they realize it or not, but just it's something in all of us that just to be a gamer, you know, whether you're 80 years old or five years old, just like there's something in each one of us. And maybe it is a console game like a PS5 or a Nintendo Switch or whatever, but maybe it's just, I don't know, playing chess with them or, or I don't know, playing Candy Crush. But there's I, I think just games 
gaming in general has been around for thousands of years and will continue to be in various iterations. Out of my lieutenant, this is a handful of months ago, but turns out my lieutenant loves chess and one of the other shifts does too. And they kept talking about chess and how they're so good and they're the best they know. I'm like, okay, uh, you know, like I'm not saying I'm good, but it's the same concept that happened in competitive Smash Bros. Everybody's the best out of all their friends and they go to a tournament, get their butt kicked. And that's when you find out the kind of competitor they are. Will they take it and improve or walk away saying this is a dumb game? So I asked the other shift. I'm like, hey, could you leave your chess board out? Because I don't own one. And I played everybody on my crew and our union president, vice president, stopped by to talk. He's like, chess? Let's play chess. I'm pretty good. And I yeah. beat every single one of them. And they're like, wow, you're really good. I'm like, my brother beats the crap out of me still in this game. Like 20 <laughs> years later, he still beats the crap out of me in chess. I'm not that good. I'm just better than all of you. No, you're not better than Panda. Panda is like supreme goddess of chess. Uh, we've gone back and forth. Actually, I need to send her another challenge. Usually Panda and I go back and forth. Or she she's like 60-40 over me overall. I feel I love chess. I don't know. I haven't like really played it much myself, but it's definitely one that I've mm -hmm. really wanted to get into. I love well, I love watching competitive chess. Yeah. And I'm not it's one of those like you can watch it and be like oh my god but i can't replicate it so i know a few of the openings and like yeah. concepts but i love watching like magnus carlson i could just watch him play chess all day so yeah here's one for both of you are you a fan of open world games or is a game better when it's linear and focused out of curiosity any preference um, that's a good one uh it depends on the play style God of War, I like it to be linear because if it's not linear, I get confused. Um, but it, open world for like something like Diablo, absolutely. Yeah. Like, that that makes sense. It, it depends on the game and what the artists intended with it. Um, I know like Witcher 3 is a good example uh, for people or Skyrim where it's like the game is what you want to make of it. Where do you want to go? So it gives you more freedom of choice and it lets you have the best experience you can have. Me, when it becomes open world, and the reason I never completed Witcher 3 is the moment I get a sense of freedom, it's like, main plot, no, explore everything. Yes. And I never get back. So when it's linear and I have to stay focused, I tend to do a lot better than when it's open world. So, but it, it's, it depends on the game. Because like Ghost of Tsushima was open world, but it still was like, do the story, <laughs> story, yeah. Yeah, so. kind of like Dark Souls 1, how that was more open world and you could explore and do everything in different ways. But then I kind of got sidetracked. But with Dark Souls 2 and 3 being more linear, I was able to focus better. I wonder how... hey, I'll be right back. Oh, you're good. You're Sorry. good. I, I wonder how much of that with, uh, with Dark Souls 1 specifically versus like Dark Souls 2, I wonder how much of it was the fact that you didn't get travel right away in Dark Souls 1. Yeah, because in Dark Souls 1, you ran everywhere for like half yes. the game and that was really annoying. Yeah. Whereas like Dark Souls 2, you're like, oh, insta travel? Right. Where was this for the first game? Right, got there, warped back, went to the next place, warped back, mm -hmm. went to the next place, warped back. Which now that i think about it demon souls lets you warp so why didn't they let you warp in dark souls one and demon souls is older so right. why didn't they do that right I, them. I will say though because they didn't do that it's almost like i don't know kind of forcing you to have to explore constantly i i started to memorize dark souls one super easy like i knew every turn every direction where to go everywhere um, and versus like Dark Souls 2, like on my offline playthrough, I kind of went back and did a, a new mm -hmm. game of it. And there were some areas where I'm like, I don't quite remember where to go through here or like, where is this again? Or so it kind of, uh, even though it's annoying, it's like annoying that forces and teaches you to learn, you know? Yeah, but it would, it's definitely more convenient. Like mm. even in Sekiro, like you start to remember where everything is because by pictures of like the idols that you have to transfer to yeah whereas like dark souls one i'm like i have to run but i don't remember what direction <laughs> right right i wonder if they'll ever i was gonna say if they'll ever remaster like dark souls remaster but... or remaster you right remaster or remaster <laughs> man i'm playing um I'm playing Bloodborne right now and doing like some of the chalice dungeons and stuff. And oh, it, you're going for that platy, aren't you? I well, I'm actually I was.
thinking about doing it, but I'm like, if I'm going to go for it, I don't have a single platinum in any game at all. So if this was going to be my first one, I feel like I'd want to do it on stream. I would do it on stream. Um, honestly, when I did the platinum, when I did the chalice dungeons, I co opted for that because it is tedious. There's a lot. Oh my gosh. There's like 30 chalice dungeons. Yeah. So it's nice to have somebody there to kind of help alleviate that. Otherwise, you're just spending hours and yeah. hours. I haven't done any co-op with anybody, aside from one single time where Suits co-opted with me and dropped me, like, a ton of grass and demon souls. I mean, I'm down to co-op with you. That'd be fun. How many can you have in Bloodborne? Um, three? Bloodborne and Dark Souls, you can have three. Sekiro does not have any co-op options mm. um, because it just has nothing. It's just... Just get good. Mm -hmm. get good. It's just get good. Pretty much, pretty much. Um, so this one I think would be pretty interesting because we were just talking about PlayStation 5 and stuff. How mm -hmm. would you both feel if next gen consoles like the PS6 or Xbox Series X2, 1, 360 or whatever they're going to call it um, are digital only and no option of physical disc media? If they're going to go digital only, then they have to give us at the start a terabyte of memory because or more there's just no way there's just no way you can like purchase that and hold more than one game on there right i to me there's something so satisfying about like holding a, a physical copy of a game in my hand and it was always a pain when like you know yeah. discs would get scratched or stuff like that but it's also like the idea of like I'm going to lend um, one of my coworkers who just got a PS5, Miles Morales, because he keeps saying he wants, to, he's going to buy it. He's going to get him like, let me lend it to you exactly. so you can save yourself a little bit of money because you have kids and not a lot of money. So I like, I like having the hard copy in hand, but I say that when like probably 70% of my most recent like game library, maybe more than that is all digital. Right. But like having, having the option is nice. Yeah, the option's nice, but if they're going to do that, they need to bump up the storage. And what what do you want to bet that they're going to do something like iPhone and be like, oh, it's not going to be the PlayStation 6. We're skipping 6. We're going to 7. Be the 5S. No. <laughs> PS5S. I love my PS5. Uh, don't even get I me started too. on Apple's naming scheme. I like I rant on it all the time. Like I love I love all yeah. my Apple pro mo like I love my Apple products, but like the naming schemes of everything is so terrible. It is. It is <laughs> kind of weird. I have I have an Android and my the group chat that my uh, coworkers and I all have. There's like ten of us in it um, for the station. And they get mad because they say that my mine and one of the other guys who has an Android Green bubbles. anytime they send videos and stuff, it's like Bro, you ruined the group chat. It's like <laughs> it's like, why is the video so small all of a sudden? Damn it, Kyle! It's, right. It's true. It's true. I don't know what you want from me. I will say though, <laughs> what's nice about the PlayStation 5 versus the PlayStation 4, because before I got the slim, I had the original. It's nice turning it on. And the fan is very quiet, whereas it always sounded like in the original place was taking off and then right. you're clearing it for landing later. I feel like the PS5, my biggest like love with the PS5 over the PS4 is I get home, I'm ready to play games, PS4. It's like, there's an update. All right, we'll see you in 30, 40 minutes, I guess. No playing now. <laughs> PS5 is like, there's an update. Skip like updates done yeah, yeah. well the website is on the much controller. better on the playstation 5 too like i don't know what they did but they might have taken it from like the amazon fire stick because fire Stick's wi-fi is so good and now playstation 5's wi-fi is really good interesting hard plug interesting except the controllers like all of a sudden my controllers need a software update every single oh, no. week <laughs> yeah which is weird but i I don't mind it just because this controller, like the vibration, the rumble pack in it Ooh, is so good. So, oh my God. And like, so I good. remember seeing, uh, I think it was Moist Critical was talking about it, saying how like, dance this controller is dirty, uh, saying how you you won't get it until you hold it in your hands. But like even running, it's like, eh, 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 eh. Yeah. and like the, the rumble is just so clean on it. And now the I'm like, that did freak me out when I first started playing on my PlayStation 5 before I started streaming it. I was like, why is there a mic? 
I was so confused. I saw like my controller was on and it showed the bars and then it showed a microphone. I was like, wait, there's a there's a microphone. I think PS4 had a mic as well, didn't it? No, like it didn't have a mic, but it like could project microphone. like the sounds oh. from the video game from it, but it didn't have a built-in mic. So I was like, gotcha. okay, I gotta go and mute this mic because I don't yeah. want. <laughs> as you say that with your iPhone right next to you though. Right, and the <laughs> Alexa, who goes right. by Samuel and computer in the right living next room. to you. <laughs> no, a lot of technology. Yeah, when I first saw the PlayStation Five controller, I would, didn't really like the look of it. But the second I got it in my hand, I'm like, this just feels so perfect in my hand. It and, does. And then the rumbles are great. I, the battery kind of sucks on it a little bit. It does. Like, yeah, yeah. I, so I tend bad. to just keep on like plugged into my PS5 yeah. whenever I'm playing. Well, I have my cord right here, but I have the wireless up there Ooh, because yeah. I have the white and the black one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, the... I, love, I actually I liked the sleek. Like I like the white and black look. Whoops, I just turned mine on. <laughs> I, I heard it. It's like beep. Oh, what are we crap, playing? What are we playing? Squat up. Well, it's not, it's not plugged into my computer right now, so or the TV, so I need to just remember to do that later. Do you hey, maybe there's an update. Remind you. Do you play your PS5 like on your monitor, or do you play it on like a TV? I on a TV, on but I usually swap the HDMI cable through my uh, capture card. Mm. Um, so it's like my Switch is plugged in right now, not my PS5. So it's one of those like I if I'm streaming a PS5 game instead of like, ah, I'm not streaming right now, but I'm playing off stream. I'm not going to swap it out. I just keep it in the back of the capture card. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah, think much same. of it. So. Yep. Yeah. I have all, I have like all of my consoles over there all hooked up to like an HDMI splitter. So, and they're all hooked up to my monitor. So I just like Mark. turn the switch on and then my monitor switches and then I turn PS5 on and like monitor switches. And then it like all kind of switches back and forth, which is super nice. Yeah. That's so clean. Me, I'm like, all right, guys, give me one second. And right. I'm like crawling <laughs> under my desk and like plugging in different oh. HDMIs. You're not crawling under your desk, Clover is. She wants to end stream. Rip her out. She does. It's a pain. <laughs> she hasn't yet, though. So maybe it's just a tease. Maybe you just need to put it like a guard up there. Like put a box. Like a No, that's a challenge. And then put a, a hole like for your feet. And that way that she doesn't get in there. No, that that's her saying challenge accepted. Like <laughs> she'll... <laughs> Well, she Especially is your child. Box. You have always been a challenge accepted kind of person. When it comes You're to like wrong. stuff for streaming, like I've always been the person ever since I started streaming, like if I'm going to put money into stuff, I want convenience over everything. So like I, that's a big reason I went with like the Elgato lights and the Elgato stream deck mm -hmm. and like the HDMI splitter. Cause I pretty much just want to like sit down. I press one button on my stream deck and like everything insta loads and like windows go where they're at and it's one click of a button and everything's loaded up ready to go so yep. makes it really I easy time to do that apparently to start itself right Zeph? the what when your pc restarted itself not oh one stream gosh. but twice. oh my He's gosh like, what is going on it, it was it was drivers there was like a a new driver update for the G my nvidia gpu and mm -hmm. after i like rolled back the driver now it's been like smooth sailing but i was like so hyped to go from a <laughs> macbook to stream on like an actual 3090 <laughs> super high-end pc and i still have like crashes not all the time not nearly as much but like a once a month crash or a restart will happen and I, I think Ooh. it's just like, it, it's one of the 10 commandments of being a streamer at this point is like, if you don't have any problems or any hiccups at all with streaming, you're probably dreaming. It's probably not really happening. I mean, happening. for two months, <laughs> Kyle didn't have stable internet. Yes. Now look at him. Yes, yes. I, I can feel it through my monitor watching you. Of which I need to message the G Fuel guys again. Be like, hey. Did they ever figure out what was going on? Was it Was it a cut wire or fiber or something? They don't really know. I don't. They don't know. Um, but so I went to uh, a friend of mine. Oh, hey, I'm actually clearing out my desktop right now while I'm staring at it going, huh? Um, Finally. So uh, one folder at a time. Uh, a friend of mine, Wretched, uh, whose stream oh, yeah. name should be Wretched. Uh -oh. He's Orderland. I raided him one night when the uh, the Internet was dying. and I was just super frustrated. Then I remembered for like six, seven, eight years, he worked it or as an Internet tech support guy. And I remember I knew this because I messaged out on like Facebook at the time because I wasn't on Twitter like, hey, the Internet at this fire station I'm at is dying. Does anybody have any advice? 
posts it. He immediately calls me. He's like, hey, Kyle, you realize this is what I do, right? And he walked me through fixing the internet for the station. Uh, so I rated him without thinking much of it. And I was like, wait a second, you know internet. <laughs> uh, and I, I hit him up and I was like, when you're done streaming tonight, can we, can I call you and walk through this? He's all, absolutely. He finished his stream a couple hours later, shot me a text, was like, when you're ready. Um, we got on a Discord voice call together. He, I shared my monitor. He's like, I have a few theories. Um, had me type in a few commands, a few different pings. And he's all, hmm, I have a question. Do you have cable one? I'm like, spark light now, but yes. And he said that they're notorious for having a problem with, uh, I think he called it like coast to coast or something like that, but it's that in certain areas, like this small section of housing all shares the same internet. Mm. And so somebody around me, what they can do is more or less jailbreak it. So that, you know, like your download can be immaculate, but if where you're downloading from only has so much upload, you're only going to go as fast as what they can upload. Right. Yeah. But if you do, it was called coast to coast, jailbreak and something like that, you can bypass that so you get fantastic internet but the cost of it is that it saps the internet from everybody around you Ooh, what an asshole and move exactly and so so that happened uh, to you basically yes and cable one for years like stuff like this happens they don't acknowledge it and they don't do anything about it and so I was I was talking to Light about this earlier while golfing. It was really disappointing because the tech that we got on the la one of the last streams with that internet, who like jumped on Twitch mm -hmm. to yeah, witness it and jumped in voice chat. Yeah, he was awesome. But then at the end, he was like, "Hey, watch this video and tell me if it helps." And it was a YouTube video a tutorial on setting up your OBS settings. And I looked at it. I was like, "Holy crap!" What if it is my settings all this time and I'm the reason it sucks? Uh, this is like before I talked to Wretched, mind you. Um, and so that's why I did the test stream on my Twin A account with the new settings, made it like super HD stress test. It went well. Next stream, I was like gung ho happy. This is going to be great. Immediately crashes and dies. And that's when I ended up rating Wretched and he told me, yeah, here's what's going on. Uh, it's not your settings, and he's all, I'll buy you and your entire fire station stakes if this new internet doesn't solve your problem. He's like, I guarantee you, you're going to be fine with new internet. Just watch. He worked for CenturyLink, so he knows. Mm -hmm. So wow. I, I took a huge downgrade with like the download and upload, but the consistency of it is all I needed. Yeah. Yeah. I so. mean, David uses CenturyLink. I use CenturyLink. I haven't had problems, so. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because uh, a few months ago, I was having like issues with my stream with like just frames dropping left and right. It's just weird stuttering yeah. stuff going on, tearing in Dark Souls. And I was so confused because I'm like, I have a 3090 and I'm playing Dark Souls 2 <laughs> on my PS5. So there's like no weight on the PC itself. Mm -hmm. So like, why is this happening? And I'd pull up like uh, the software that would just say the GP was maxing all the way out like as like all the settings were maxing out crazy on it. And I had this sub goal at, on the bottom of my screen that had like a oh, widget yeah, that was this. rotating. And you know how like, <laughs> oh. like uh, I, I think we usually stream at like 6,000 bit rate, right? Yeah. Like that's kind of like Something the like max that. bit rate. I had <laughs> exported this widget from Premiere Pro at 1.4 million bit rate. Oh. So this little like itty bitty widget on the bottom down here for my sub goal was like a black hole consuming all of my GPU resources, oh, just no. eating it up. The moment I got rid of it, now I haven't had like any problems whatsoever. <laughs> Good Lord. I'm actually scared to go like I I found out like I, there's a test you can run in uh, stream elements that says like, hey, here's your preferred settings. You don't mm. have to go with it. Oh, yeah. And like. I, I ran it with the old internet. It was like 6,000 free, easy. Cause I yeah. have like 30 upload and ridiculous that what I had. Uh, and this one, I'm like, ah, oh, 10 upload. I don't know what, what can I possibly run? Six, it's like 6,000. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, I have it set to 4,500 right now. Cause like to be safe I've, in my heart of hearts, I was just so scared to see it like 
dropping even now because there's a little green box in the bottom and i'm so used to see that flash yellow orange red yellow orange but red green consistent i mean it, it's been great but i still have that like ingrained fear that i'll see oh, yeah. in the corner of my eyes like it looks yellow and my heart sinks because i think the internet because just died two months of that fear yeah right right here's it sucked here's a question that will be interesting to hear the answers from both of you oh no what do you if you had to pick what is the most overrated video game out there hot takes in common <laughs> Okay, so I have my opinion on something, but I don't want to take away from those that love it. Of course. Uh, Everyone play whatever they love. I, yeah, exactly. I didn't have that much fun playing Minecraft. Interesting. Interesting. But I, I understand the appeal of like build whatever you want. I think that's great. Um, and truthfully, maybe I just need to give it more of a shot. But I was like... Eh. It, um... For me, who? Oh, sorry, King Fink. I know you're probably gonna listen to this. Final Fantasy VIII. I, it just didn't feel like a Final Fantasy to me. Like it was just really different. And I think I called it quits in the like museum area where you have to find the dinosaur. I was like, this don't play so Fifteen weird. then. <laughs> like, what am I doing? Yeah, Fifteen is interesting too. Like. Seven, Bachelor party five, gone wrong. Nine, my favorite of all time. Ten, amazing. But like eight, I tried. Oh, ten two. This is so weird. Well, ten two was very different. I didn't. Uh, I played that off stream because I was like, I don't know about this playstyle because everything was so fast. Whereas used to the turn based, right? But like eight was just like. I then just, definitely don't play fifteen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 10-2, I actually love the gameplay system of 10-2 and the dress spheres yeah. and all of that. I think that's one of like my favorite combats in like any game yeah. ever. The storyline was lacking until about yeah. chapter three-ish because there's what, five chapters in it? Yeah, I mean, I that, think, that's yeah. general. I was going to say like after the combat, everything else I just thought was kind of garbage. Well, 10 was just <laughs> They ruined brother. Um, 10 was just so good because... When you found out what really happened with Titus, you're like, <gasps> what? Right, right. S spoiler alert for what? Yeah. I it's... actually don't remember a whole lot, so I need to go back and check that. I I'll just remember you about what happens to Titus. Please do. The, um, the thing with Final Fantasy games is a lot of them they're not exactly like a. a I don't. I don't want to say cohesive, but they're not exactly like a, an easy to follow start to end. There's a lot of there's a lot yeah. of characters. There's a lot of side stories. There's a lot of sometimes they'll throw time in there or like future and past and present, right. or there'll be like dream. Like this person's a dream. They're not a dream. It's so it can be a little confusing yeah. for sure. Well, even even like Final Fantasy. Oh, sorry. Even Final Fantasy Seven still kind of did that, where it's like. Ah, somewhat convoluted story, but it's like, who's Lucrezia? Mm. Who's Sephiroth's real parents? Hint, not Genova. Stuff like that. Like, there's still some convoluted awkwardness to it. But I, what I like about the Final Fantasy series is that they've never played it. Well, they never played it too safe by like mm. finding a formula and making every game like yes. that. Instead, it's like, cool, we're going to try this. You didn't like it, but there were some parts we liked, so we're going to take those parts we liked and combine it with this prior one to give you this with yeah. a few new things. And I, I love that they do that. Also, have you guys ever played Final Fantasy Tactics? No. No. Uh, like, told me I, I need to. to play that and six. Yes, six. <sighs> Tactics is one of the hardest ones. Don't play Tactics Advance. It's shit. Um, but Final Fantasy Tactics is one of the greatest stories. It might be my favorite Final Fantasy story. Bing. Not my favorite Final Fantasy, but the story is brilliant. It's one of the hardest games because it's your Fire Emblem style. Like, you know, you're on a gridded plane. You choose where to put your uh, guys right out the gate. Then you have to move and take turns and stuff like that. But like that, it's hard. Oh my God, is it hard? But man, it is such a good game. But that's what oh. I like about Final Fantasy is like, I yeah, play it stories again. kind of seem convoluted until they really explain it. 
but I like to think of it as a way of like it's like an anime that has like, maybe three or four seasons and mm. it's convoluted and weird at first but then mm. it really starts to explain itself like One Piece I was like I don't know if I'm gonna per se like this five episodes in I'm hooked because I'm getting Usopp's backstory um, about how he was like crying wolf and like why people wouldn't trust him and I'm like I like this show yeah. and that's how Final Fantasy is for me like what have you seen Usopp's dad yet yeah trick question i know you have but yeah i remember <laughs> um but final fantasy 9 why i loved it so much is it kind of pieced everything together like an anime and getting vivi's backstory and why he was so afraid to time out like the other black mages i was just like poor thing poor thing he's like the best I... final fantasy character of he's all best time boy yeah, best exactly, point. exactly, Kyle. But I have to well, say, that's though, a fun, that's, that's a fun best, fantasy like, one, Black Mage. Mage character. But if we're talking for cuteness, Moogles all the way. They're so cute. Mogs and Moogles. Um, no, I was going to say uh, eight was like my least favorite of a lot of the modern ones. Um, Twelve was actually I never finished twelve. I had gripes with it that weren't storyline related, though. Uh, but like eight, eight's last disc was pretty miserable. Um because I was used to sevens where it's like, hey, anything you want to clear up, now's the time to do it. Versus eight was like, hey, the whole world's frozen. So uh, <laughs> go fight the boss. You missed your welcome. chance to wrap yeah. stuff up yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, but I, I still I still enjoyed eight because you had like the the intro was brilliant mm. and beautiful and Liberty Fatale is such a great song. And then you had like the garden versus garden war yeah. that cinematic, which was gorgeous. Like eight was such a beautiful game to me in so many aspects. So to say it's overrated, that's a hotter take than me saying I didn't well, like Minecraft. For me it is for me, but I'm glad you told me to either start with 10 or nine when you were like, if you're gonna yeah. play Final Fantasy nine or 10, but Kyle was like, I really feel like you're gonna like nine. And he like pushed me towards it. And I was like, all yeah. right, I'm gonna play it. And I cried my eyes out at the ending. And I text, I remember texting him. I was like, you asshole. He's like, <laughs> Did you finish it? I'm like, yeah, and I'm crying. <laughs> yeah, as well you should. Yeah, Final Fantasy <laughs> eight. Like I, I, that's one of my most like, such intense mixed feelings about a game because there's so many things like I really loved about it, like the soundtrack. I actually really mm. like the junction the system. Is good, I will say that. Yeah, Ju junctions. I did like the concept of enemies leveling up with you, but they scale different from you. So right. it's like you could beat the whole game without ever leveling up. Right. Or when you're leveled up and you go back to spot at the beginning, those monsters can still hit you pretty hard. Like I, I loved that concept, but I had to explain to some friends that couldn't wrap their heads around it. Like, what's the point of leveling up? And it's the idea again of scale. Yeah. Where you gain seven HP a level, they only gain four, you know, as a broad example. So like the gap will grow, but if you don't level up, you're going to have a hard time, but you can still do it. And I think that's just brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I like, I, I know a King and I have talked a little bit about final fantasy eight. I, I don't know. I'd probably give it like, like a four or five out of 10. If I was going to rate it, like it just like sure. some things I really about love, right. like the graphics is, are amazing. It's really cool. Even seeing a game, the card old. game. Yeah, the card game is pretty addicting, but even like how the graphics, how you're playing the character, and then that weaves into a CGI cutscene so seamlessly, it just feels like God of War before God of War yeah. kind of thing, how they yeah. do that. Oh my God. Oh, real quick, Fortune, sorry. Since you said God of War, did how long did it take you to realize that there were no camera cuts in God of War? Um, I think it took me like a day or two. Yeah, Crazy. like the fact that every single thing is seamless. It is what like in movies, one of my favorite things in movies is when they do a long take. Same. All uh, right. And like, and they do it really well, of course, so like every season of Daredevil yeah. did it really well, stuff like that. And um, Netflix Daredevil, but like, yeah, how the whole game is just one long take. Oh, well, kind of reminds me of that. In a sense, like God of War with the seamless is kind of like, in a sense, the last of us because everything kind of like went smooth. Kyle can't speak because he never finished one or two and I'm trying to get him to play it, but it is spoopy season. Just 
like was so smooth and the storytelling was so good and i felt invested like i was like what's going on with joel what's going on with ellie like i want more yeah last of us is, is almost like the opposite of the Soulsborne games because they're so ultra story focused it almost mm -hmm. feels more like you're you're watching a movie rather than like playing a game versus like stuff like yeah. bloodborne and dark souls it's like you are definitely playing a game and there's some story sprinkled in there but you got to look hard for it it's so true and i wish you know i would have saved the last of us for spooky season like right now because of all this i yeah. wish i would have done that that would have been a I good just one. had to text light real quick because light told me to play like super horror mansion or something like that maybe you but should I... play the last of us after that kyle because cool. the last of us part one will take you like five days it's short i have two more questions for the two of you before we wrap up this crazy ass podcast that we've had but i think <laughs> this one could be this one touches a little bit more on the streaming side of each one of us yeah if you were to get to the point where you're making plenty of money monthly, would you quit your jobs and pursue streaming on Twitch full time? No. No, and I've I've talked about this on stream actually. My my big goal in regards to that is actually not for me to be able to quit my job, but my brother to be able to say like, "Hey, I don't need to work at a bank anymore do anything like that i can stream and set aside you know crazy amounts of money because at this point like being a firefighter is pretty ingrained in who i am and i love what i do and ultimately i love helping people i love to help people and being in this job and streaming i get to help at like such a broad wide audience through streaming i can motivate and inspire and encourage or make laugh or cheer up people and then through firefighting i can literally save lives so that's what i'm like i i could never stop being a firefighter until i retire then what about you fortune peace i wouldn't personally um and i have i've i've actually thought about this a lot like you know the idea of Making a living off Twitch is a nice one, you know, because you get that interaction, you get to play video games, and it's all things that I love to do. But I'm also a social person, and I love that in-person interaction, and I wouldn't get that if I was a full-time Twitch streamer. Also, the downside of being a full-time Twitch streamer, and this is just my opinion, is it's two things, really. No health benefits, no mm. job security. If Twitch was to go under one day, you're screwed. You're SOL. So it's well, I think... I think that's when you have to, as a content creator, have diversify. Exactly. So yeah. such as Zeph, who, sorry, I uh, I don't know if our cameras are lined up the same for all of us. Somewhere like, around you're, here, you're you're <laughs> right here for me. You're um, in the middle for me, Kyle, and Zeph's on the far for me. <laughs> yeah, he's on the far right for me. Uh, but so it's like YouTube, TikTok, mm -hmm. uh, podcasts, diversify. Take so. And tell people my Twitch is meant to be my main platform. It is my main platform, but now like YouTube, I, I just put shorts on there. I need to get back to putting content on YouTube. Um, but like, yeah, I, I use my Twitch content and bleed it out into YouTube, TikTok, stuff like that. If Twitch ever went down, then I would have to utilize YouTube and content like that. Plus, if you're doing really well, most top streamers have a very successful, you know, YouTube, TikTok, most. social media platform. Patreon. Patreon. Uh, not all of Only them, fans. Which I should, not all Twitch partners. Like, for example, Dahlia is just very basic. She's like, you can find me on Twitch and Discord. Yeah. Oh, no, but that that's a partner. That's not necessarily a, a full-time, like, XQC, Buku Buck successful. Buck -E XQC yeah. Ludwig, yeah. Uh, Toast, um, even people like Dr. Lupo and Tim the Tatman were able to leave Twitch and focus on streaming on YouTube. I'm sure YouTube offered them, you know, a nice little incentive there. But regardless, like they had such a, a massive following on YouTube from their Twitch content already that they're able to be like, cool, abandon right. ship, jump on YouTube, and they were okay. Yeah, no, and that's 
That makes sense. But what I do appreciate about somebody like Dahlia with her success of streaming off just the PlayStation, she's a part good streamer. But guess what? She goes to work every single day. She's like, I love to hustle. And yeah. I am good at hustling and staying busy. Hell yeah. And it, I, I hold Dahlia in very high regards, by the way. Like, I respect the absolute hell out of her. She is awesome and she has a fun stream. Um, but the way that I heard it put that I actually really appreciated was on Twitch, when you're not live, that's it. You're you're not live. Nobody's really good. Or it's hard to find you. Um, very unlikely. Versus, again, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Your content's out there 24-7, 365. Your discoverability is always out there. Uh, so not having those other diversified content is usually more of a hindrance because you're not getting discovered if you're not live on Twitch and you have no other platform. So yeah, Dahlia is the exception, not the rule. I completely agree. And she's agree. super pretty. And she's my leader in Team Goddesses. <laughs> That's I mean, awesome. I mean, Kyle's pretty pretty too. <laughs> Gross. No, thank you. What what do you call the TikTok thirst trap? Oh, I call it the TikTok thought. Oh, you call me a thought. It was uh, Sweetheart Allie was the one who told me. She's like, you should post thirst stuff. I'm like, ah, so I'll post, post some thirst. Trust me. I'm like, he, ah. he finally it, did a TikTok that I asked him to do, which was him being like a nerd. And then he changed into his regular self. And he's like, great. You got the shy, awkward me out again. I was like, I told you like if you it, that, thirsty, well, the, keep the problem with that was like that was a little too thirsty for me and that's not content that i really enjoy making i like making your nerdy goofy firefighter yeah. stuff like all this oh. stuff if you look if you look at what i've done recently like the push-up stuff i don't mind because it gives me a challenge so far all the push-up ones i've done haven't been physically challenging but like the timing is the challenge and i think it's yeah. so fun um so the content I like to make and be associated with is less like the clear thirst, love me, firefighter muscles, who and instead it's like, man, this guy is goofy and I enjoy that and I want to check out his other content. Well, the one I sent you, the six feet tall, because remember the chick was like, your shirt's supposed to come off? And that's when I was like, no, you were supposed to change into Goku. Yeah, that was, was like, my bad. This is going to be better. <laughs> Holy crap, some of the comments I get though. What the hell? Daddy? Sorry, Daddy? Oh, no, that Daddy. was funny. That was funny, okay? And she Kyle. actually, like, she comes to the chat now on occasion, so, like, I, it, I thought it was hilarious, but she, oh, uh... one girl that was like, can you come put this fire out in my bed? And I'm just like, oh... She didn't even know I was a firefighter at the time, too. That's what made that comment all the more funny. Oh, no, uh, the, that, that Daddy one was because the audio was circul or circulating through TikTok, where it was like, Mommy? Sorry. Mommy? Sorry. Mommy? 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 Sorry. Mom. And then the and so, other girl that was like, if you were a little bit younger, I would totally date you. She's one year older than me. <laughs> she's like, are you younger than 35? I'm like, technically, yes. She's like, ah, you're too young for me. I was like, damn, that is tight standards. They're like, oh, you're so perfect. And he's like... No, it, but here's the thing. I don't, I don't want to take away from them. And I don't want it to come off as like I'm shunning the my supporters on TikTok cuz truthfully and you'll see me comment I try to respond to every single comment and it's not easy because some get missed or straight up don't show up for me but it's I always or you almost always put much love because that's what it's about it's a it's all about spreading the love and the happiness and the joy so if somebody like is complimenting me like I'm I'm going to take it as that a compliment that they're like you know oh my god this is great or like you yeah. know the the sweating face thing it's like holy shit because nerdy awkward shy me is like eh no they wouldn't like me it's okay it's whatever yeah, that's so, basically see, his response then he misses me making a comment on one of his videos that was a chopper quote and he's like i can't find it i'm like hey i i showed you real thing I showed you that I like it wasn't on that, right? So I have to find it. It was like a cute, cute comment. All right. I do got one more question for y'all again on the streaming side of things. What is a myth about streaming that you think needs to be broken out of curiosity? Yes. Um, I would say 
a myth, especially one that I would have liked to know before I started streaming, because I think Twitch kind of has this connotation is that it's not all negative. It really isn't. Like a lot of people, when I started streaming, was like, are you afraid of like negativity? I'm like, that's literally like maybe 5%. Yeah, you're going to get some weirdos and you're going to get some hate, but 95% of Twitch community is nothing but love and positivity. Agreed. Uh, I I would actually largely agree with that too, because um, the two of the guys I was working with on day three of my shift, because they were curious and they're they're nerds and gamers. One's like a big old Halo fan. The other is a big old Smash Bros player. I found out. Um, so like they were talking to me about it. They're like, I like Twitch, but man, it's just so negative and angry all the time. I was like, well, that depends on the streamer and what they've allowed their community to turn into. And all of us have been really good about like just no like zero tolerance of said negativity so it's all about what you the streamer allow um something else is <laughs> uh how can i put this it's not just people watching somebody play a video game um <laughs> what i always have to explain to firefighters who can't wrap their heads around it is that we as streamers are putting on a show mm -hmm. uh we're not just playing a game and being like cool you're watching me play a game unless you're you know a top professional of said game in which case like, like shroud. people will just yeah, yeah your, your shrouds your xqc when he was in overwatch stuff like that uh mango for melee and hungry box um mm -hmm. stuff like that not saying that they don't put on a show because they all still really do but like ultimately some people will watch me for the gameplay but the majority is because it's a show that you're putting on yeah. you are entertaining you are connecting you're doing stuff like that so and always flexing on them i agree on that completely bf <laughs> always be flexing and i also think like another thing i should have told myself when i first started streaming is that you know, like streaming is going to be like anything in my life. Like there's going to be a lot of great days and there's going to be days where I'm just mentally exhausted and I need to take a break. And that's OK, because it was you know, one of those like, days for me. <laughs> a lot of people are just like, just stream. And it's like, but if you're mentally exhausted and you don't feel your best self, it's like, no, I'm not going to do it because I'm going to get really irritated and I just need to take some me time. So, you know, yeah, I, I think it's really important, um, especially in streams like shadow theories where they promote mental health awareness it's like if you're not feeling your best like take a breather step back it's okay to take a break from twitch i also feel like too if, if you don't take that advice and you do stream and you're having like a really bad day if you're mm -hmm. not vocal and upfront about it sometimes that can do more overall harm than it can good exactly. like you think like oh i gotta stream i gotta be consistent i gotta get out there and then you know some of your people come in and you're just like really sharp or really brass mm -hmm. or like, just like not really feeling the vibe maybe they get the impression like oh I, maybe i they're on a mood today maybe i just don't want to come back here again and exactly. sometimes is it me <laughs> right is it me or like what's going on and and Ugh. yeah so I, I think if you are feeling off and i'm super guilty of that myself like i extremely pride myself in being a, as consistent as i possibly can and there's definitely been times where i sit in front of my computer and i'm like man i really don't feel like i want to stream today but like i gotta do it i gotta do it and then i just go for it and uh you know sometimes it is good idea to take a step back and to reflect have a mental health day and take some time for yourself yeah so. because if you don't take care of yourself nobody else in like as Agreed. much as our twitch community wants to be there for us honestly we have to be the leaders and we have to take care of ourselves first and foremost yep. because nobody else is going to i agree i uh you know what's funny too is like for me i've since like i've really jumped into the streaming and really improved it and like i it's you know, got the fire lit under my butt to keep growing the channel. Like I haven't had any of those days where it's like, I don't want to stream, but I have in today's the example, I had those days where I'm just like, so just physically and mentally and emotionally exhausted. And I felt it in today's stream. And I felt bad because like I was playing Nickelodeon all-stars brawl and I was not playing well and I was starting to get frustrated and then it was lagging and I could see it and feel it. I was like, 
Ah, oh, this isn't good. Well, not only um, that too, is you were also playing golf in the sun, which added to your exhaustion. Well, yeah, that's the, that's where the physical uh, exhaustion really kicked in there. Like, yeah. And then like I got home and I tried to start the stream and like the lights behind me were messing up and like everything wasn't going right. And it really bled out into it. And I wish I had light told me to download spooky's jump scare mansion which is what i'm going to play tomorrow he's like it'll be a quick download i'm like yeah but if i download while live it messes it up yeah and i kind of wish i took a step back from a game that was causing me more frustration and just played that well, so, so no, i'm like but i understand like you didn't want to download it while streaming yeah you know, yeah yeah people uh, forget that you don't download stuff when you're streaming because it'll cause problems right right yeah, and the other yep. aspect with streaming too, uh, like Kyle, what you were saying is, is like if you're if you're using a camera, you're always showing your face and your emotions, and we can mm -hmm. really just you don't even have to say anything. Like humans can instinctively just look at somebody and feel that body language and that emotion from somebody. So, you know, if you're playing a game and you're just not feeling it before you even press start, and then you go, and then all of a sudden you can feel that frustration, you can feel yep. that anxiety, that pressure, or whatever sometimes you know people can kind of sense that a little bit and i'm, I'm yep. i'll say there's definitely going to be it's like a two-sided sword there will be people who appreciate the mm -hmm. consistency and that you know what kyle wasn't feeling it today but he still went out there and gave it his all and then there's other on the other side of it like kyle wasn't feeling it maybe he shouldn't have given it anything yeah exactly so it's a it's a double-edged <laughs> sword <laughs> I'll say about there's actually only one day recently and I won't go into the exact details of why, but I was so like, I don't, I don't get mad often, like legitimately, like I want to hurt him a lot. So, I've yeah. only seen him angry, maybe a handful of times in our whole friendship. Yeah. And, and usually when I'm mad, like I get, I'm, I come down pretty quickly. It takes a while to get mad and then I, to stay mad is like mm -hmm. impossible for me um nearly impossible but i uh <laughs> there was just one day in recent memory that like i was just so mad and david reached out to me he was like don't stream tonight i'll handle it i'll take over yeah i remember you, this you take I the night off and this. instead i went to the gym which i needed to do anyway so i was good set like a new squatting personal re or personal best and like felt really good afterwards but it was like mad at myself because i love streaming and i was yeah. upset that i missed no, it but, but it i need i needed call. the night off it was the so. right call because i remember you texting me saying i haven't been this mad in so long oh i was XYZ. livid <laughs> and he was like i'm ready to go smash somebody's face in. and i knew one particular person bad. not anybody one particular well, but one it's all good particular person yeah i, I don't like, i don't I literally going to punch their face in and i knew <laughs> at that moment it was serious yeah when when david's having to call me and be like all right all right all right go go work out but it's like that's like the once every few years situation for me that i'm like hmm because yeah. and again it's it's more of a i used to not get mad easily anyways but i would let like stress and anxiety get to me and it's actually through my job now and it's something i appreciate is that I help people on the worst days of their lives. Mm -hmm. I see the worst of the worst of the worst of it all. And it, I take advantage of that by getting perspective and utilizing that. And not a lot of people in healthcare do, but I, I like to at least, or not everybody I'll say. Um, and so it's that perspective that makes me just say, F it. Like I don't, Mm -hmm. I don't care. Like if something doesn't go my way or didn't work out, I'm like, that sucks. Oh, well, moving on because I know what true bad days look like now. And I realize how fortunate I am to not have to worry about that. Like sure. a large majority of the time. I think that's actually so. a really great way to end the conversation and end the podcast. <laughs> um, just kind of, ex I completely agree. If things aren't going your way, Effort. I mean, you know, <laughs> tomorrow's a new day, new chance to try again. But exactly. the final most important question for the two of you, where can all where can all of our <laughs> viewers and listeners connect with the two of you online? Uh I am on Twitch as Fortune underscore cookie. Fortune is without an E. 
Um, you can also find me on Twitter. Um, same username and TikTok and Instagram. So I hope to see you guys there. God, I got to find a way to have my like Twitter handle actually somehow it's lead like, back follow to follow the link tree right here. Yep, I actually have all of the socials linked below each one of our things. So <laughs> Twitters, Discords, Instagrams, yeah. Twitch is the all there. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say you could uh you can find my twin brother and I on twitch.tv backslash a one underscore twins. Uh you could find us on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube. Um tw or uh Sorry, TikTok and uh, YouTube are also A1 underscore twins. And uh, much love. Much love. Much love. I gotta stretch my shoulders more. They hurt so bad. This has been a great conversation and a great podcast. So just like first off, thank the two of you. Um, I usually don't get to have multiple guests on the show. So this has been a great, great experience and a great conversation. Yeah, thank um, you so much for having us. But before we go, yes. I think it's only fair that we get the best flex of Kyle's life. Yo, let's do it. This is for everybody. <laughs> hey, one, flex two, on three. Oh. oh, I hear you go to the Damn. gym. <laughs> <laughs> I could try my my bicep still hurts, but I don't care. There you there go, it is. right there. Can't compete, but it's all good. In the heart, right? In the heart. You, I noticed that you like to duck <laughs> your head down when you flex, man. Loud and proud. There Keep you go. Head held high. <laughs> uh. Everybody, thank you all so much for watching and listening to this week's episode of the Zephcast. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to smash that like button for the beautiful YouTube algorithm. It really does help the channel out a lot. And if you want to see more of your favorite content creators, streamers, and podcasters in the near future, don't forget to subscribe. It's absolutely free to do so. And we'll be having even more exciting content coming up soon. Thank you all again for watching. Zephyr's XP, Fortune Cookie, A1 Twins. And I'll catch you on the next one, my friends. Much, Much love, love, everybody.